Hello! Hi everyone! Oh, let me just fix myself a little bit. Hello! Hi everyone! Mia is here to hang out. Yes, we are all here to have a fun time. I hope you guys are doing well. Welcome to the stream! So today we're just ha gonna have a, a relaxing stream. No stress. I just did 15 hours of schoolwork. And I'm a little tired, so we're just gonna hang out and have fun. Remember, uh, if you guys have any videos you want me to react to, just send them in the chat. Once again, welcome everyone! So, let me just end the BGM and let's get started. Oh, I just realized, uh, thank you! Thank you, Mia, for the, for the follow. Let's go. Hmm. Ooh, Anthony. He's one of the YouTube OGs. You guys want to watch him? You guys want to watch Anthony? Let's see what else. Oh, I wish I wasn't live. Hacham is live. Well, Hacham is gonna be live. Connor. His videos are so good. I watch his videos a lot, they're so good. And please do not notice this. I watch the show Lucifer a lot. I kinda like it. Hmm. You know what? Let's go watch Anthony. Let's go watch this. Paparazzi. 
Those whose careers rely on capturing sensationalized celebrity photos for gossip magazines, tabloids, and other media conglomerates. Since the mid-century celebrity culture boom in Hollywood, paparazzi have played a critical role in connecting the curious general public with their favorite celebrities who otherwise remain shrouded in mystery. Paparazzi photos have been- Oh my god, I remember that Shia LaBeouf thing. When he wore that paper bag on his head, Oh my god, I remembered that. Known to sell for truly astonishing amounts of money, with the most highly valued of these photos going to People Magazine for an unprecedented 15 million. What? 15 million? How much are people willing to pay for this? Oh no, uh, sorry, another, another fire truck's coming by. Uh, I'm sorry if you guys hear that. There's a lot of fires recently. I think this is going to be like the thir 13th fire. 13th fire today. That's near my area. So don't worry. Uh, I'm safe. But I just hope everyone who's involved with the fire is safe. 13 fires near my area in just one day. That's kind of, that's very bad. Let's continue. Don't. Mia wishes she has that money. Oh, everyone does. 15 million, 15 million dollars. How much, how many Big Macs can you buy with that? You would be, you would have enough Big Macs for your entire life. My name's Anthony Padilla, and today I'm going to be sitting down with paparazzi to learn the truth behind their infamous careers as candid celebrity photographers. Are these paparazzi secretly deployed by celebrity PR, or do they sincerely stalk their prey? in hopes of revealing celebrities at their lowest of lows. Is having a job that I don't, get I don't know who that guy is, but he looks like he's being like wrestled by that guy, by that paparazzi guy. Millions of dollars in the instantaneous snap of a photo, a blessing or a curse. I spent the day hey, with Keith. paparazzi. Hey, hey, good, good, Rick. Hello. Well, what an introduction. Hello. This guy looks like he would, he, he look, well, he dresses like he's a celebrity. Like those guys, like you would see in like TMZ. He kind of looks like that, actually. Oh, thank you so much for coming out and teaching me about the wondrous world of paparazzi. Wondrous. Good word. It's very wondrous, right? Not for me. What do you consider yourself? Not paparazzi? for me. Uh, celebrity photographer. I just picked up a camera. It, I let everyone else call it what it is. I don't know. It, it, they, they've labeled it. It is what it is, guys. It is what it is. Uh -huh. And I just accepted it because it brings hype. It brings attention. I don't even know what paparazzi and paparazzo are made up words. I would consider myself press because press. I don't just do paparazzi. Press. I do red carpets. Mm. I uh -huh. do night crawling at night. Like so that. you're just roaming the streets with your camera. Whatever I see that opportunity to make money, I'm there. How long have you been a paparazzo? For about nine years now. Got to be at least over 20 years now. I wonder how much he's made. If like 15 million. For some of these, after that, he's been doing that for 20 years. I wonder how rich that guy is. Like, that must be a lot of money. I just realized I paused at a very bad, at a very bad frame. Oh my god. This looks bad. Alright, let's just continue. Over 20 years. Over 20 years. Your paparazzo career is almost old enough to drink. Memes. Yes. What does being a paparazzo entail? Basically a photographer who finds a story of interest to the mass audience, photographs it, and just showcase it to the world. And I get paid as they write their stories. So you get paid to see what people's reaction is to what you capture. It's all about creating hype. What makes a good hey. paparazzi photo versus a bad one? Is the photo in focus? Is uh -huh. the photo full length? Is uh -huh. the photo properly lit? It's like an elaborate game of Pokemon Snap. So yes. You've got to center frame, what kind of facial expression they're making, yes. how many of them are in the shot and what they're doing together, yes. how rare they yes. are. Yes, yes, rare, rare, you want the rare. What's the biggest paycheck you've ever- Paparazzi's best Pokemon trainers. That's what I got from that. Paparazzi's best Pokemon trainers. Received for a single photo. 
for a single sale was uh, the last video of Michael Clark Duncan. He came out of Staples Center. Oh my God, this guy is ripped. How big is his muscles? Like, damn. We're watching a Laker game and I asked him, hey, what do you think about Kim Kardashian running for mayor of Glendale? And he just gave me this whole like speech. Wait, is there, is, are there any Americans in the chat? Can you please confirm that? Did Kim Kardashian try to run for mayor? I don't know if I want that to be real or not. ...about how she doesn't live in Glendale and how Kim Kardashian shouldn't be a mayor and mm. like two days after he died. So that video was the last Whoa. video of him and it went everywhere. TMZ paid $5,000 just for that one clip and after that it sold to the other networks and other agencies and built up even more revenue. Comparison time, can you tell me which of these photos between these two paparazzi photos is better and why? The Bieber photo. The Bieber photo more money? Because he's coming after you and you know, he's mad. What the hell? That's good, you want them to be mad? I don't want them to be mad, but if I capture it, then I'm happy for myself. What first made you want to become? I'm happy for myself. When you get mean photos of celebrities, that's when you're getting the big bucks. Come. Um paparazzo when i was younger i would walk around with a two liter soda bottle and i would follow around my family with you know just going around and you just like pretending the... to to be you know paparazzi i always wanted to be a paparazzi what yeah all what, what ever since i was younger that? i don't know i just i grew up around pop culture and yeah. i lived all my life in hollywood so i knew that this is what i want to do what is your favorite or most elaborate paparazzi photo that you've ever taken my kim kardashian video because it's epic i've altered pop culture one night at a club what called this guy do? Hollywood, and this is the one that harvey levin has stated look he looks like he looks like one of the gta characters Oh my god, yes, he kind of does, to be honest. He kind of looks like a GTA character. Good job pointing that out. That my video that I recorded made Kim Kardashian, because that faithful night, Paris Hilton had already broken up with her BFF, Tara Reid. Uh-huh. Tara Reid, I was recording Tara Reid being denied at Hyde nightclub. And then I quickly looked to my right, and I see Paris Hilton. All the paparazzi's already gathered over there. She took her stylist. And her stylist was Kim Kardashian. There's one faithful oh. moment when Paris is walking. Kim Kardashian used to be a stylist? Hmm. Like, she got famous for that um, X tape. But I didn't know that she had something before that. Yeah, 90 Day Fiancé. Straightforward. You have a really good eye for right, this. Right at Tara Reid. And that's where TMZ paused it. And they used the old... Wah, wah. And that was your video. That was my video. Who are some of the most recognizable celebrities that you've gotten photos of? You can name a whole list and I can check off every box. Kim Kardashian. Check. Paris Hilton. Check. Taylor Swift. Yep. Leanne Rimes. Yep. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. Prince. Yes. Frankie Muniz. Oh my god, what picture did they use of Prince? Hilton. Check. Taylor Swift. Yep. Wait. Leanne Rhymes. Yep. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. Prince. Prince looks dead. Like, it looks like that they grabbed him out of, like, the casket. He looks dead. There you go. What a horrible... I, I just gotta say, what a horrible photo to put on there. He looks like he's dead. Yes. yes. Frankie Muniz. Yes. Brad Pitt. Yes. Scary. Yes, very uh, scary. Lil X. No. Oh! A, a new one. What has been your scariest paparazzi experience? I, I myself got run over by Britney Spears. I'm the guy who got run over with the foot. Britney Spears ran over your foot? Yeah, so she went around the car. Oh, she this the gas, video. And I'm on the side. She gets my foot, and I'm like, don't hit the gas. Don't hit the gas. And the first thing she does is hit the gas. And in one second, boom, drops me. Cars, the tire's on me. So then she's, okay, so she, now she starts moving the tire. She's turning the tire on so your foot? So now the tire's turning on my foot. She's like smashing like a cigarette. <sighs> Thanks. 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 I'm sorry, that's what's horrible. Now, what would you say to anyone who has harsh judgments against paparazzi and maybe thinks negatively about them? Come with me any night that you want and I'll take you on a ride along and you can see that it's not just a get a real job sort of thing, it's actually a real job and I work hard for what I do and 
Come with me and I'll explain and you'll have a whole different view. If this video gets over 100,000 likes, I will join Keith for a ride along paparazzi experience. Well, he did get it. 155K. Yes. I wonder if he actually did it. Paparazzi industry changed your perspective of celebrity culture. It has because I know what's fake and what's real. The whole thing is. He gotta do it. Yes, he has to. When what? When did this come out? Like 2019. Rigged. I'm it's gonna like, search that after gimmick. stream. If see if, it's, people if he actually did that. The valet, come over here, man. It's or do you guys want to see that? Ooh, ah, spend your money here, and they built an industry out of this. It's all money. This guy looks like a GTA character and acts like a GTA character. I just noticed that. He looks like a GTA character and then he also plays like a GTA character. Manipulation, the whole thing is rigged. None it's of all it a construct. None, none of it, none none of it, of it is a real thing. None of it exists. So do celebrities ever purposely tip off paparazzi so they that do. they can elevate their, their image of fame? If you look through my phone and my contacts, you would see about probably 40 or 50 different celebrities in my phone that contact me. Directly? Directly, yes, directly. Do you think anyone ever does it to impress Imagine, me? imagine get... Yeah, also 90 Day Fiance. Imagine getting a text in the middle of that. Oh! It's Kim Kardashian wanting me to sabotage her, her enemy's career. That, is that what it is for like them? Like Kim Kardashian just texting you in the middle of the night. Say, hey, I need you to take pictures of this guy. The, the prettiness. Yes, oh my god, yes. I've seen like these like exposés on like celebrities. All of them are literally just the biggest whiners. Because I guess they're so famous, they just got used to that. But oh my god, the prettiness. I've been paid by people that are not celebrities to impress their date, <laughs> to take their photos. I'm Madison, wants to know how far a celebrity has gone to avoid you. Taylor Swift would leave her apartment in a music box. Wait, she would climb a music, a music box? box? This is what people say. I mean, you don't have an S. I'm, I feel sad for those two guys that have to carry Taylor Swift. Yeah, Taylor Swift apparently live, leaves her apartment using this box to escape paparazzi. Basically, parked inside your, outside of your house in New York, and two security guards walking out a big music box on, on wheels, getting into the car, and security guard goes with that music box. I mean, and you don't see Taylor Swift for- Look, I just gotta, I just gotta point this out. Anthony's face here is priceless. You say- it's like deep inside of his mind. You can tell he's saying like, oh shit. After that, his face is like pure amazement. It's so funny. For like three, four months, you would think that she's leaving in and out with that music box that keeps coming in and out every day. Mm -hmm. I've, I've, shot, I've shot Kim Kardashian being driven by Kanye West in a white Prius. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Do you think so? Yeah. A white How do you Prius. think you would feel if you were being stalked by photographers? I would child, hate it. Perhaps. I would you hate it. You would hate it. paparazzi following you around? I would hate it, yes. Because I know what it feels like to be in that crowd and, yeah. and you know, I see firsthand the celebrities yelling and saying, stop taking my photo. Yeah. And I know the feeling of, hey, I just want to go get a milkshake. So you would hate it, but yet you participate in it? Yes, I participate in it because that's my job. Ray <laughs> I like the tag at the bottom. Hmm. Ray wants to know if you ever decided not to publish a photo of a celebrity because you felt like it was invading their privacy. Never. 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 The sky oh my the god. I, of haven't... You... I don't know. This guy says he, if he was personally there, he wouldn't like it. Oh my god, guys. Please. Please be respectful of other people's privacy. Gotten one of those phone. photos yet? Uh... But if, if it was like... I've shot funerals where the celebrity is. Oh my god, this face! Oh my god, this face! Crying. I've sent that in. You don't even care? Your morals don't speak up loudly? They do, but there's three other guys that are gonna send the photo if I don't send it, so I gotta send that photo. Even though someone's going through a deep emotional moment at a funeral? Yeah, and I'm sure when I, you know, go through one of those. You can kind of tell from this guy's face he feels shameful, but you can tell that he feels like he had nothing he can do about it because he kind of needed the money. You can kind of tell from his face he kind of feels regret.
you know, things myself and I'm sad, it's, that memory is going to be back in my head. Like, dang. Are you going to be able to sleep at night knowing you've done Money is money. I yeah, at night good. sadly. <laughs> Your Kidding wants to know if you would consider me a celebrity. You're kidding! Yes, I think I would now. Why? Why not have the common person be the celebrity that they are? And that goes for all of you, not just some the people that are rising. Oh my god, GTA, the guys. Right? It's every single one of us. We're all a star. 90 day GTA guy. I'm gonna call that guy 90, 90 day GTA. You said you saw me in the airport when you were waiting for Halle Berry. Yes, I saw you in the airport and I was waiting for Halle Berry to come down. You know, I'm looking down the hall and yeah. I, I see a familiar face. And, you know, it took me a minute to, to you know, get the face to who it was. Yeah. So I see you and I get, you know, photos of you coming out because, yeah. you know, I'm waiting for Halle Berry and, yeah. hey, here's an extra person coming out. That was, uh, that was a weird experience. Paparazzi mobbing Halle Berry and also a few photos turn to me and get yes. snapped to myself. Yes. Did you I sell did. that photo? I did not sell it. Did you try to sell it? I don't even think I submitted it. Yeah, because you're like, this guy's not a celebrity. I'm not going to waste my time. <laughs> what is about... <laughs> you kind of, you can kind of tell Anthony there kind of said like, hey, what the heck? But I still kind of agrees with him. Yeah, this guy's not a celebrity. Being it's a, a self bird brings you the most joy. Having my own hours, working my own time, having no boss, and doing whatever I want. If I don't want to work today, I don't have to work. I'm just not gonna get paid for today. I can sit there and chill. It's like being a VTuber or like a streamer, but you don't get paid. I'm sorry, I'm gonna continue. <laughs> that was a joke, guys. At home playing Call of Duty, or I can go out there and make, you know, a thousand bucks. Would you mind doing a demonstration, capturing a photo of me? I'll run past here. Okay. And you can see what kind of a photo you can capture in the moment. Okay. And you can explain why it's good or bad. Let me get the right settings here for this. Sure. This place here. <laughs> Gotcha. Right up the nostril. Right That's there, a great brother. one. That's it. You element of surprise, and you got to be well, quick. Oh There's my. no time to wait. There's no setup. You could. This guy isn't a celebrity. Yeah, that quote. It must. It really. You can see from his face in that scene. It kind of hurt him. It like kind of smallly hurt him. But at the same time, Anthony kind of agreed. Like, yeah, I'm no celebrity. You can see from his face. Could have just walked out that door and yeah. I would have never seen you again. Uh -huh. And I would have missed my opportunity to do this segment. Uh -huh. But hell no, I'm not going to waste that time. I'm going to make sure I got you. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. <laughs> Welcome to Hollywood. Your feelings hurt when people say such harsh criticisms about paparazzi? I've had a girlfriend that broke up with me because uh, I would spend too much time working. And I would like to give my respects. I would like to press F to pay respects to this legend. Uh, she said, you know, you're just a scumbag paparazzi that, you know, is going to get nowhere in life. Did that, did that hurt your feelings? Sadness, you but true, but yeah. true sadness. It does, yeah, it hurts my feelings, yeah, because they don't actually know yeah. what goes into being a scumbag paparazzi. I actually have a parting gift for you. This is perfect. Paparazzi uniform. Best it looks interview. homemade and looks Sharpie made. It, that's the point. What? Which you could get at padildoshop.com. There's assholes outside. Padildoshop.com. Padildoshop.com. Oh my god, am I gonna get banned for that? Hopefully I won't get banned for that. It's his shop. Subscribe to Anthony Padilla on YouTube. Uh, if not, your photos are not gonna be taken and you're just gonna be a D-lister and on the bottom of the list. Don't be a D-lister. Yep. All right, you got five seconds to shout out, promote anything you want directly in the camera. Go. Whenever you get a chance, go to uh, YouTube and look for Hollywood Tubers. Follow me on Instagram, KeithKMJ. Shut up! Oh, you're bringing it way back. Thank you so much, Keith. Yeah, I no problem. I feel like I fully understand. Oh my God, the Smosh days. I don't want to sound like I'm so old, but I grew up on those Smosh videos. Oh my God, the memories with that shut up. In the wondrous world of paparazzi. Yeah. After spending the day with paparazzi, I've come to understand that their desire to photograph stars is motivated by the thrill and sense of satisfaction that comes from capturing dazzling photographs while under immense pressure. In a society where celebrity culture and photographs have become increasingly valued, paparazzi are merely feeding society's demands. And if they're not actively participating in this, someone else will. See you later, bye guys. Press a like.
That was good. You got nip slips? Do you guys want? Do you guys have any suggestions for me to watch? Like, do you guys want want me to watch anything? Because if you guys don't, I'm gonna just continue watching this document, like exposing things from Anthony. They're so good. Do you guys have any suggestions or you, anything you want me to watch? I'll give you guys a minute. Well, thank you for letting me know. Okay, so let's just get on, I guess. What, video game voice actors. Video game voice actors. The talented voices behind our favorite video game characters who shaped our childhoods. In 1980, the game Berserk brought voice acting to video games for the first time in history, causing audiences to be completely blown away by its realism. Try, guys. I've heard of them. Wait, okay, let's go watch that. Wait, we I don't want to get, don't want to get anything. I don't want to get spoiled. Hmm. Do you have any recommendations, like exact videos, Mia? Yeah, you have like any specific? Hi, Mary. Welcome to the stream. Oh, it's okay. You're welcome to lurk. It's fine. We're just watching YouTube videos today and reacting to them. Uh, Mia, uh, do you have any like specific, specific video you want me to watch or just any? Without the recipes. Let me see if, the, if that's a playlist. Oh, you know that too, Mary? Hmm. Wait. Okay, so let's just search it. Without a recipe. I hope this is it. Pizza. Just have some pizza. Wait, let me just go drink some water. Oh yeah, Mary. I watched your stream earlier. That was a good stream. Let's start. Welcome to Without a Recipe Pizza. It's got dough. Y'all remember Flubber? The savory sh is where I what come the? to play. It's in my blood. It's got sauce. Oh yeah. I like this already. I like this already. Oh my god, thank you guys for cheese. suggesting so this. Much cheese. The cheese is hidden within this, like a Ferrari. It's got toppings. You are getting a mouthful of fish. You're like beauty in chaos. <laughs> <laughs> what is on fire? Will it be Brooklyn? Will it be Chicago? Will it be Italia? Or will it be hell? Oh, this is a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> Without a recipe. <laughs> Today the is the day. Behind the Try is finally available on the streaming service near you. Go to find it at tryguys.com slash movie or... Check it out on your local iTunes, your Amazon Prime Video, your Google Play, your YouTube movies, your Voodoo. Take a seat. The show is about to begin. Actually, it's Without a Recipe Pizza, try. but still enjoy... I wonder how much they paid for that. Let me just lower it down a little bit. Try that. The Try Guys are back in the test kitchen for another episode of Without a Recipe. I don't know what to do with... Nah, f*** it. Which one's Colby Jack and which one's Monterey Jack? This challenge? Pizza. There's nothing more sexy than the film that develops on top of the cream sauce. Each bit. Breaking gender stereotypes. Yes, and being hilarious while doing it. That's the best kind. Baker will have two hours to create a pizza of their choice and present it to our panel of judges. It looks like a little bit of fungus is in the center. My name is Jimmy Long. I'm an actor, host, YouTuber. I have a cooking show. I just released a cookbook called The Feast of Fiction Kitchen, which I guess makes me somewhat qualified to talk about food. I'm Quasi James, and I'm from Brooklyn, New York. I know what pizza is supposed to taste like. 
Crazy, can you run through every piece of don't you can think of? Pineapples. Here we go again. Pineapple on pizza. What? What's your guys' opinion on it? Personally, I don't think it belongs. Hate me all you want. I don't. I don't think pineapple could be on pizza. And here comes another fire truck. That's fire number fourteen. Fourteen fires today. Pineapple and pizza. Mmm, you like it. Well, I respect your opinion anyway. It might end there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm Brandon Conaway, and I'm the co-owner of Quarantine Pizza Co. And then I am Carolina Conaway, and I'm also the co-owner of Quarantine Pizza. I'm a chef and I've been working at a few Italian restaurants in LA, so I just started making pizza. I know I just had pizza, but this is making me crave pizza. This looks good. This is in quarantine, just to make a little extra dough on the side, you know? Extra dough? Oh. Extra dough. <laughs> extra dough. <laughs> yeah. I've yes, always had yeesh. a love for pizza making and bread making, and that's always been a passionate hobby of mine. A good pizza is a balance between crust, sauce, and topping. Beautiful leopard spotting on the crust, a little bit of a char, but... Oh my god, that looks good! Not burnt by any means. For the most part, they kind of know how to make like... <laughs> oh my god! Like that, right? I actually have recently developed a hobby of making bread, and an adjacent product to that is pizza. Now, if there's any episode where I got this, it's this one. First of all, I dress like a pizza today. I look adorable. We all agree. Just I've like never made a it myself. They kinda does. I am someone who loves watching people. I love his hair. His hair looks on fleek. This guy looks good. Cook, but I personally don't like doing it. Now I have made deep Not pizzas. Not by any means, I've even but made pizzas yes. in the last couple of years. From that clip, that's the impression I got. Hashtag try, guys. This, they are very entertaining, I must say. Now I know a lot of people out there. Who it's only been like three say, minutes, but it's really entertaining Chicago pizza so far. Is it pizza? F you, yeah, it is. Chicago pizza is pizza. It's it's personally one of the best pizzas, but New York style is still best. Three, two, one! Sexual! Yeah. Wow, what is it? I'm making an Sexual. ode to New York of yesterday and of today. Oh. So I'm gonna make a fancy ass pizza oh. that represents modern Brooklyn, but I also wanna just have a classic New York slice that represents Brooklyn of old. An ode to gentrification, oh if boy. you will. Mm. I don't know about that. I am making a Chicago deep dish pizza. Fun fact, I used to work at a Chicago style fast food place in college, so I've made Italian sauce. Chicago pizza. Oh, you don't like it? I kind of like it because it's cheesy and I love cheese. You've never heard of it? Wait, wait, let me just Google that. It's like this. It's like really thick. After that, all this is just cheese. After that, sauce on top. The crust is just the mixture of the perfect, like, crumbliness and that. This pizza is one of my personal favorites. Yeah, it's thick. For the, for the people watching the Philippines, um, a good place to get this is actually, uh, Sparrow. Uh, I know Esparo does, like, serves these. It's really good. I wouldn't say best, but it's the best you can get. That's, I guess, like, convenient. It's really thick and has so much cheese. Like, look at this. Like, it's really good. Wait, oh. Oh, okay. Pasta this sandwiches. Is I made Italian beef sandwiches. So I thought, let's take two of the best flavors Chicago has and make a super Chicago pie. 
You've heard of Super cheese Chicago pizza. Pie. You've heard of four cheese pizza, I but have, have you ever heard of the 24 cheese pizza clock? Oh, but what? A different slice for every hour of the day. Why don't you check that pizza clock to find out what time is it? I am making what I'm calling the world's best worst pizza. I'm taking everyone's world's least favorite best, toppings, worst. statistically the worst things that people want to say, don't check that box when I'm getting Domino's, and I'm putting it all in one pizza. That's right, even my dough and sauces are gonna be kind of screwy. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's yeah. a choice. <laughs> but no one has made all those collective bad choices hey, together. You're right. Maybe it's good. I'm gonna start first by adding our salt, our water, and we're just gonna add that to our double zero caputo pizza flour. We got bread pie. Double zero what? What did that guy just say? Double zero what? We got all purpose flour. We got pizza flour. Tipo cero cero pizza flour. What this is what we use that? for like making pasta. This is the good stuff. We like to not use any commercial yeast in making our pizzas. So that means that we use a starter, which we build into a levon. Our dumplings without yeast were a chewy mess. Yeah, I love how they edited that. Teaching how to cook pizza and automatically failing. So I feel like you need that bounciness to it. You have a scale? I do a little warm water, I let it burp for about 10 minutes, and then if it burped enough, like then we did it. I think we did it. For a minute. it what a horrible way to say. Yep, right there with you. Are you just copying everything I do? No, Ned, I would never. About five to 10 minutes, just really more so to incorporate the water and the flour and just initially get a little bit of gluten development. Ooh, what's that? So I'm making a spinach dough. Oh, God. that's right. This pizza is gonna be very confusing looking. And I like putting spinach a little dough. bit of olive oil. That. Pizzas are always so oily, but I was not planning on putting it in my bread. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. That does not sound appetizing. Ah! <laughs> I'm so drunk. Woo! Drunk? No, no, I can't remember now what I am. Let's give myself a nice little LeBron oh, I moment, because I am a champion. Ah, oh, fucking A, Zach. We're out of the good stuff. Oh, man, that's so We're out of the good stuff. <laughs> this might be really good, Pete. What's that? Sugar. He's putting sugar into his bread. Wow, this guy's crazy. Sugar. Dun, 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 dun. I heard sugar or makes it brown eat. faster, or like brown more. I don't know if that's right, but I've heard that from like binging with Babish and that. You are my yeast girl. Okay, that's. You are my yeast girl. And you got me burping oh, too. God. Oh yeah, salt. Thank you, man. Oh that my is gonna be God. furious this when I This is him. not okay. <laughs> Guys, I am with a man who bakes bread all the fucking time. What would you do? Of course, and you hear the way he's talking about it? It would be foolish. It's without a recipe, not without a Ned. I put in some sugar, give it a quick whiskey, whiskey. Not Eugene's whiskey, kind of whiskey, whiskey. whiskey. After this, we will scoop it that into a bowl whiskey, whiskey. and let it proof in the fridge, where we will then portion it later and we'll have our finished dough balls. This is my dough. I'm just gonna keep, I'm just gonna play with it while that you looks do it. good. Thanks. It looks like slime. His, his green dough looks like those like slime balls that you make with glue. Mm. Hopefully it looks better when it's cooked. Play-Doh, yes. Play-Doh. It honestly already tastes like pizza. I don't know how you have like all the sauce flavor. It's already there. <laughs> the whole thing. Man, Ned's bread. You know when your dog just ate dinner and he's lying on his back and then you just kind of like poke his, his belly? That's kind of what it feels like. I'd say that the pressure is on to deliver. The pressure is on! <laughs> this actually feels okay, but again, I just don't have the confidence that it's gonna rise. I'm known as the one that's like the Italian, and I'm like, you know, I make pizza with little pizza Wesley all the time. Wesley. Well, hey, look, I could be, look, I could be your son. Okay. I could be, okay, I could let's be like, do Papa, that. Papa, you wanna make the pizza? <laughs> oh my God, role play skills, my guys. Role play. <laughs> While the dough is set aside for proofing, the guys move on to making their sauce. We use our amazing Rustic Crush Bianco di Napoli tomatoes, kosher salt, and California olive oil. Dump that in here. 
Oh yeah. Oh no! Oh. <laughs> I'm gonna pick- Oh no, the can. The can lid. The worst sauce, which is white sauce. I think there's no such thing as too much garlic. Anytime a recipe says one clove of garlic, three. I like having a little bit of chunks of garlic. And really all we're doing is whisking it to dissolve the salt and incorporate our oil. Starting the sauce while I also roast some bell peppers, I'm gonna be marinating my Italian beef. In Roasted peppers, those are good on pizza. That's a great idea. In the jardinier juice and adding a little bit of the jardinier vegetables chopped up into the sauce, but not too many because I don't want it to be a spicy sauce. I just want it to be a delicious sauce with a little kick. Also, just remember a very important step. You do not want to cook your tomatoes. What? Now it's cooking. Oh you my have... god. The, that is fucked. He cooked it. I wonder why you don't cook it. Does it like do something to the sauce? Does it burn the sauce? That tartness from the raw tomato, where if you're cooking your tomatoes, it's just gonna be sweet. Italy, pizza. Oh, f it's burning. I would say that you and I are doing pretty standard sauces, which for a pizza, you don't wanna get too crazy. Let's stick some anchovies in the sauce. Let's make it fishy. I got these little goofy little cherry tomatoes. They're beautiful. Whoa, what's that? This is tomato paste. I didn't even see that on the thing. It, so it like thickens it and it gives it a little bitterness. Now I want to get my uh, anchovies into a fine paste. People can pick off their anchovies if it's a topping. I'm not letting that happen. If you eat my pizza, you are getting a mouthful of fish. Mm. You know, I do think the geese. Fish on pizza. I haven't tried it, but I hope it's good. Chicken sauce is delicious on pizza, but I've never put it in pizza. So today's the first. Okay, I think it's good now. So let's let's try it out. I'm really liking the way my sauce looks. I would not eat my sauce and make out with anyone. I wouldn't make out with anyone and then eat your sauce. Out of respect for your sauce. Oh, thank you. Yeah. My sauce out is done, so it's time to bring out the cheese. Cheese on 24. What? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. This guy's like jumping like he has. Like he's a bunny rabbit, like the, like the mini hops. A lot of people hate pineapples on pizza, so this pineapple's gonna make a lot of new friends that he's never seen. Cheese number one, mozzarella. Talk about the good stuff. Parmigiano Reggiano, D-O-P. Cheese the second. Romano, cheese the third. Ned continued to bring out all 24 of his cheeses, each chosen to match characteristics found at that particular hour of the day. You know what happens at 4 a.m.? Craft singles. <laughs> Let's see what's going on with this dog. Yeah, it's at 4 a.m. Craft singles. Oh my god. Y'all remember Flubber? Oh my god. <coughs> yeah, remember when you guys said it was like Play Doh? Yeah. Now it really looks like it's made of Play Doh. That was almost a shatter class. Whoa! <laughs> oh no. Splash zone! Son, we are going to America. What is it like, Papa? Well, it's not like here. With only 24 minutes left, Ned has exactly 60 seconds to shave each of his cheeses. Zach has agreed to help. Ugh, so much cheese! Cheese! You can never have too much cheese on a pizza, in my opinion. This guy feels nice and airy. I feel like a cat. Like a cat knitting. That's a weird way to sing of basically massaging the dough. I thought this guy was the one singing. Apparently it's the other guy with the great hair. I thought it was this guy. I'm lactose intolerant. I really just need you to grate some f***ing cheese. Three, two, one. No. Hands up, bakers. What the hell? Cheese. Now that the crust, <laughs> filling, and sauces have been What the hell? Cheese. Oh my god.
These guys are amazing. The Try Guys will allow the dough to proof overnight in the fridge. Tomorrow morning, they will have one hour to toss, assemble, and bake the pizzas. I have three different items I could potentially bake this on. I think I might choose this slab. So we've got a little tray, and we've got what's called a pizza stone. I've never heard of that, but it has pizza in the name. Good enough for me. I'm going to preheat this mother Also, I'm using the pizza. It has pizza in the name, and that's good enough for me. Imagine if that's how they actually found out all these things work. Just say, it has the name pizza on it and it works for me. Pizza stone. Let's preheat that shit. So if you're cooking pizza at home, I would just turn your oven as high as you possibly can. Let's crank it up to 550. Oh shit, all right. I brought my own cast iron skillet. What I love about cast iron skillets is if you own one, you technically also own a weapon. I don't want to kill a person, but if I have to, I'm using a skillet. The best part of having a cast iron skillet, because you also have a cooking device and a weapon. Isn't that what they also use for like PUBG? Isn't that the pan they use for PUBG? And now we have our dough, which has been in the fridge for about 16 hours at this point. We're gonna start portioning. We have risen and so has our dough. Oh, oh, oh. me. Oh. Holy uh, Mine definitely rose. Mine definitely rose, Ours look too. about the same look size. At look at that. Giant. Yeah. Remember huge. where he started? Look how much he's grown. Look at Jeez. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, oh, look at this Jeez. bubble. You get a good New York slice, has those big bubbles. That's what I was talking about. That's true. All right, Keith, I'll see you in this Bye. next shot in a different place. Yep. That looks beautiful. Thank you. Oh, wow. My little flubber, he grew. Oh, oh my gosh. God. And I'm going to push these into about 260 gram portions. I don't know how much, I think this is quite a bit of dough. So this might end up being like a 20 inch pizza, but we'll see. If you don't pre-shape and shape your dough properly, you'll end up getting an uneven distribution of your structure, and that'll give you weak points in your pizza. You might not even get in the oven since it's very easy to break at that point. Well, that guy's pizza's fucked. Merry, 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 pizza. Ping, dong, ding, kong, pan, merry, ding, tong, hong, ding, ding, kong, hang, going, well, pizza. They made pizza into a musical. Pizza musical. Get some flour going. Straight into the flour. So I'm gonna start first by just going around and then spreading. You're already just making a pizza. You already got, look, what the f is this? Look, he already has a pizza. Yeah. We're just gonna stretch. He already has a pizza. Rotate, stretch, that guy's working slowly. Rotate. Flip it back and forth wrists. and then rise and then throw it. Look at you go. Beautiful. Look at me go. I might not and be good at making dough, hole. but I'm super coordinated. That's a little bit of the Borat. Hello? Mm. Ooh. Oh, my God, excuse Borat. Me, excuse me. Hey, Zach, I made you a present. Oh, thanks, man. Just drape it. Huh. Oh. oh. We're twin. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. <laughs> a giant cool who made of dough. Whoa. Double dutch. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, Jump that was fun. Made of oh. dough. Oh. Mini had a job. And so much fun going on. Yeah, I'm gonna go with the though. rolling method. Is the throwing method ended up in a game of double dutch? I'm starting with a little <laughs> olive oil on the bottom. So when you're making a, a deep dish style pizza, you're gonna have usually butter as your fat instead of olive oil if you're putting any in your dough, which gives it that pastry, crackery type of texture. Wiping it around like a little glue stick. Oh. I'm gonna start topping. Not too much sauce, but a good amount for our margarita. Oh, oh yeah. Da, cha, cha. Woo! Oh, no! Oh, no, the dough. A little bit of this African blue the basil dough. that a friend of mine grows for me. Our nice nitrate-free pepperonis. The dry mozzarella, just because, as you can see, it's just ready to go. As long as your balance and your combinations work together, you can use whatever cheese you want. 
Cheese, number one. Now, everything I know about cheesing a pizza comes from Lunchables. I don't want to go crazy with the provolone because it's not your typical pizza cheese. It really depends on the type of ingredients you have, but you want to make sure you have a nice balance. And you don't want to just overload it with toppings so you don't get a taste in anything else. Figs are like kind of sexy. Oh yeah. Like am I crazy? Figs are like oh, kind of sexy. I'm saying that fruits are genitals. But I am going to try to get at least two sausages on this. Oh my god. I, I hope I don't get banned. This big boy. I'm a big sucker for a perfect pizza bottom. And I just want that like right hard toasty bottom. Just a nice hot bottom. Now that I'm rubbing it out. Mm -hmm. Now that I'm rubbing it out, I, I see out. that I've, uh, I've overshot my load. Here is my cream sauce. I've, uh, oh my. I've overshot my load. <laughs> oh my god. It's a, it's, a, it's a slice of American cheese. I would eat that. Why did you have to waste it? I, I would have eaten that. Here is my cream sauce. You're going to get a big mouthful. Another thing about Chicago style DJ's pizza is that the sauce is on top. Everything's buried. It's all a surprise. So when you pick up your pizza and you ordered like something, they typically throw a, one or two toppings just on the top so you know what's in the pizza. So you don't go home and open it up and be like, wait a minute, this is mushrooms. I hate mushrooms. Embrace the anchovy. What else did I say? Embrace the anchovy. Uh, Oh jeez. I heard that is I heard anchovy slimy. Is that true? I heard like anchovies like slimy in the mouth. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, I should put the cheese on before that. F me. I am on cheese number 24 and it has been a good uh, time for everyone. This is my oh, crazy Gouda cheese, it's the bell pepper nice cheese. Fun. I just think it's a really pretty color. You know, you gotta throw them off on every angle, but I'm gonna mix it with some parm because I know parm will taste good. All right, time to put my pizza in the oven. Getting your pizza into the oven. Don't wanna mess this one up. We use a pizza peel, which allows us to easily pick up our pizza and just load it right into our oven. <sighs> Shit, it's a little too big for the... Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, we no. may have to abandon the stone. Not coming off. Why don't I hold it and you see if you can't pull it off and see if you yeah. can get your fingers in there? Oh no! Hey Zach, can you do me a favor? And yeah, what's that, up, dude? Put that hot pan underneath the stone real quick. Ready? Yeah. Oh no! Nice, nice. Everything's Ned. falling yes. apart. This might work. Do it from the top because it's holding on there. It is not holding its shape at all. Oh f me! No, it's oh boy, it's it's ruined. It's having a hard time. It's, Can it's we just... unscrew the handle from the bottom of that? You shuffle in on that side. Yeah, it's definitely too wet. Oh, it's so moist. You can also that just cut any just excess dough you might have off. If your crust Nothing is looking will come a little back too big, it's gonna just bunch it up. <laughs> just a big crust. And if it fails, I'll just fold it into itself and say that I love calzones. That's what we do here. Oh no. Hey, hey. Now don't touch it with ah. your hands. Oh, shit. Here we what go, pizza coming through. I've seen this in what pizza, pizza restaurants. As it's cooking, what did he do? they add a couple of extra pieces of cheese. Come on. My pizza's done. Let's take it out. Hold on. Oh, there's a shit ton of oil on the pizza. Why did I do a fucking pizza stone? I don't know what a pizza stone is. We bake our pizzas at about 950 degrees. I'm doing 550. I'd say that this pizza stone is the worst thing that has ever happened to me. All right. The worst thing that's ever happened to you is a pizza stone. <sighs> ah! You got great flavors. Yeah. You got great story. Great to see you. Great energy. Yeah. And a, and a great ass. And a great ass. It's really fly. It's actually a badass. Well, it's time for my pizza to go into the oven. I have put a little beef, a little sausage, and two peppers on top so people know what's in it, even though I know that the beef is going to get so overcooked. Shortly after all the pizzas entered the oven, things really started heating up. What is on fire? Oh, like shit. The oh, no. I think we took out the catch oh, the yeah, drip pan. Oh, we took out the catch pan. Whoa! Oh, no. Great. Great. That is burned. I don't know where. That's just burned.
where all this oil came from. It must be 5 o'clock. Or no, actually, that's more like 10 p.m. What could be going on at 10 p.m.? It's bedtime. So you think it's not the sauce? You think it's the cheese had oil? Colby Jack? Colby Jack? It's time for bed, Colby Jack. I forgot to put the black olives on, so I'm going to dribble some of that on here. Just putting My it in. pizza isn't quite cooked as well on the crust, you know? But some of the cheeses were burning, but the mozzarella isn't burning. If your cheese is burning before your crust is, Ooh, you're no. kind of shit out of luck. Keith, this yeah. is there's nowhere, there's nothing else to say. You're just shit out of luck. This is the most disastrous thing I've ever made. It looks crazy. It <laughs> looks know. like it's covered in carrots. Ned, what is this like limp little slug over here? <laughs> What's going on? Um, that's my first draft breadstick. Oh, oh yes. yes. What are my breadsticks doing? Oh, oh. They do not look appetizing. <laughs> Since not the design was all appetizing. Uh -huh. I'm gonna throw on some more pineapple. Because why would Th I that pineapple is gonna burn? There was pineapple, yeah. Right. Oh, an that extra has so pizza. much sugar. I'm gonna bake gonna some burn. pepperoni so I can get them nice and crispy and lay them on top. Yours looks deeper than my deep dish pizza. Hey, you know what? I think you inspired me. My fancy half actually looks pretty remarkable. My New York half looks like New York got attacked by radioactive waste. Yeah, it's like <laughs> post Avengers. <laughs> like New York got attacked by a new killer. Here's New York. Because <laughs> what is this pizza gonna do without its egg? I mean, it's like going out without a hat. If I can scrape this off, then that means everything that happened before doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Because it's all about the dismount. Yes. Yes. It's all about the dismount. Like Carrie Strug. Strug. Well, just like was. her. It's time for the finishing touch. Just a little bit of hot honey. Just a little bit of balsamic. Down in, down in. I've heard balsamic oh, before, yeah. but honey never. <laughs> God, what is it so hard? Scrape it. Harder. This can't be right. Harder. And a little bit of drizzle. And a little bit of that. Hey, we need a pizza back here. We got a angry customer. Oh, oh. Well, you can see the two people are having an easier time than normal. Uh, oh, 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 I'm burning myself again. Right here, oh, right here. <laughs> Three, two, oh, one. Oh, okay, oh, hands up, Just bakers. about got it. Just about. Wow. <sighs> Get your pizza clock set to judge. All right, we're gonna be judging on four metrics today. The first is taste. The second is presentation. The third is creativity. And the fourth is, is it a pizza? Judges, up first, I am pleased to present my pizza, an ode to New York of yesterday, today, and the future. The classic slice from Brooklyn 1980. The modern bougie ass slice from New York 2020. And unfortunately, in the year 2060, there was a horrible radioactive spill <laughs> resulting in monstrous crust and a. <laughs> well, that's one way to save. To save this. Just call it like that. What the hell is that description? Cronenberg esque explosion of creativity. It looks like an inflatable pool. On the left, you have classic slice mozzarella, a little bit of cheddar, pepperoni. Want to keep it simple. On the right, you have your prosciutto and fig. Hope you guys enjoy. So, presentation for me, great. I love the story. For me, figs is one of those ingredients that typically when you see it, you don't imagine it on something like a pizza, but I think actually how it's presented here, the way you cut it, it looks really appetizing. So I am excited to try that out. Okay. So it does it so oh, happy. Oh, this is a bad sign. <laughs> <laughs> oh! <laughs> Let's oh pretend my that God. didn't happen. Uh, it's like a, a party you know, trick. Shall we? Shall we? All right, so pretty good. Nice. Yeah. It doesn't fold. <laughs> oh, it folds. You, I'd say it exclusively is folding. It's like, um, oh you know, like God. when people do silk rope dancing. Uh -huh. yeah. The fig is pretty good. Oh, oh we're yeah. moving on. Are we moving okay. On? Not bad. I've never had fig and pizza before. I like prosciutto. I feel bougier already. Yeah. yeah. That's for sure. Your skin is glowing. A little bit of spice, a creaminess, a little sweet, spicy action. Oh, yeah, and there are some uh, peppers on there as well. Just a couple serranos thrown in. Obviously, the crust is something else, but we have an extra little bit of things to dip it in, so maybe it's actually a happy accident. Crust is one of my favorite parts. Connect
I am sorry. That is fire number 15 near my area. 15 fires today. Never get enough of it. So I want you to just be able to... <laughs> There's no shortage. Just keep going, you know? Okay. So at the end, I want you to just be able to rip that crust apart, dunk it in that sauce. You got yourself a fun little breadstick experience. I will say the sales part of this has been excellent. That's... that's <laughs> that, I, I have honed that skill above all others. <laughs> Creativity wise, great job on the classic. The pepperoni is at a good state where it's not like frozen and chewy, but it's got a little bit of crunch to it, so it was cooked through. The bougie side was a pleasant surprise. I wouldn't mind the I'm sorry, guys. drunk person because yeah. you're gonna need something heavy before you fall asleep. Yeah. Is it pizza? I'm gonna go pizza, man. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> it is pizza. Judges. That's what's important. What it's time is it? Pizza. 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 That's right. Yeah, that's yeah. right. And what way to oh. tell what time it is oh, <laughs> than with a 24 cheese pizza clock. <laughs> it's so that you can eat pizza every hour of the day. We've got 12 different cheeses on top, 12 different cheeses stuffed in the crust. You can pick the one that you want, except in this case, we've picked it for you. <laughs> Feta and Fontina on the crust. Okay. And we got Swiss and Colby Jack on top. I got a Havarti and smoked Gouda crust, as yeah. well as a Monterey Jack and Cypress Grove Midnight cheese. I have a matzo. I've never heard of that cheese before. What what cheese is that? I've never heard of that cheese before. Barella? What is that? Im Iberico? Iberico. Iberico. 1 a.m. and 2 a.m. are saved for the Spanish cheeses. 5 a.m. you turn into a monster. That's where the Munster ah. cheese goes. Presentation. Ned, this is fantastic. It's thick. The cheese is hidden within this beautifully, mm -hmm. like a Ferrari. Oh. <laughs> Let's bite in. <laughs> I can't taste any of the other hours, but my two hours were pretty good. It was a nice balance. The pizza was like more mild, sweet flavored with the cheeses, and then we had a nice tart like feta crust, so it was a good contrast. Mm. So Yeah, the way that the judges are saying this, I don't know why. It's actually really funny. Question that there's a cheese, different type of cheese. Is it milk at different consistency? Oh my god, here comes time, another one. I'm yeah, so sorry. You know, I, yeah, I yeah. discovered that throughout. <laughs> yeah. 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 Got I think it. There's a reason why mozzarella is the standard. It's probably just yeah. the general moisture content allows for it to melt without burning before you're done with your pizza, I would say. So instead oh, of having okay. a little bit of that crunch. So that's why they use mozzarella. Mm. It's just kind of soft, doughy, yeah. Chewy, and with all yeah. the cheese and the toppings yeah. on top, it, it kind of gets it that little gumminess yeah. that you don't really want. These numbers are not edible. Right? No, 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 no. <laughs> They're not edible. But I like what I like about these numbers is they remind me of like the menu on the wall of your mm. oh, I thought pizza they, place. I thought this they made it score is really high on the creative side. I give obviously. the presentation he printed lots of this out. <laughs> oh. You have a yeah. guide. Yeah, it's nice. Oh. That's definitely creative. You're like the kid in class that did the extra homework when it wasn't <laughs> I, designed. I did 24 times as much homework. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I do want to know, what what is the, yeah. what were the <laughs> hours? Uh, oh, these are breadsticks that I uh, dipped in food coloring to turn them uh. black. Take a bite, Ned. Pretty good? Mm -hmm. Whoa, that's good, but I did not pizza. <laughs> yeah. But it's good. Is it a pizza? It's, it's a pizza. pizza. Definitely a pizza. Is it a clock? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a, clock. a clock. Judges, are you feeling this in the air? What is that feeling? Oh, I got it. Boredom. <laughs> <laughs> what are we going to say? God damn it. I just had a new. The this. New Yorker make you a Brooklyn pizza and an Italian make you a cheese pizza? Mm. Where's the imagination? Well, get ready for a Dr. Seuss inspired drug addled trip. <laughs> Whoa! What? <laughs> yeah. Wow! Look at the egg. Yes, sir, an egg. The world's. Oh my god. God, what is this? Best worst pizza. Oh, wow. There are many rules to pizza that people have created, and I said, what if I broke every single one? <laughs> the. There are many rules people have made about pizza. What if I break every single one? The egg kind of looks fine, but the pizza, like, it looks like nuclear waste. <laughs> so I looked up the most hated ingredients that are commonly put on pizza, and I combined all of them together. What you are looking at is a spinach crust, 
with a white cream sauce infused with anchovy. The toppings include pineapple for quasi, <laughs> black olives, spinach, mushrooms, whole anchovies. I hate mushrooms. If you guys didn't know that about me, I hate mushrooms. I just don't like them. Red bell pepper cheese. And of course, my favorite, a cracked egg. How's it smell? The egg. Huh. Pineapples, bro? Yeah, the, the strong taste of pineapple and fish. <laughs> pineapple and fish. Oh my god. That's why you're here. This isn't the food. We're going try, guys, without a recipe. Hold on to your butts. <laughs> This ain't no network show. Oh my god! This is the internet, bitch. <laughs> they may be holding on to their bus later tonight. This is the internet, bitch. <laughs> oh, are we gonna try this one? You go yeah. first. If this tastes good, Eugene, oh my gosh. <laughs> oh, he's going for it. First bite. Oh my god. Ooh, big old bite here. I don't know what the hell is going on here, but it's not bad. Shut up. It's not that bad. Yeah. Right? It's, it's weird. It doesn't bad. make any sense. It's not that bad. How do you do that? The Bobby second Bobby. bite I took had, I think, a full anchovy in it. Yeah. So it kind of ruined the magic of the first bite. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely not a date night pizza. Oh it's fishy. It's briny from the olives. You got the pineapple somehow tries to balance it with a little sweetness. It's not good by any means, but it's not as bad as I thought it would be considering that considering. evil concoction you came up with. Yeah, I'll take it, I'll take it. Like, is, is it, it creative really? or is, is it, it like kind of sadistic? Yeah, no. Wait, 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 and the amount of effort that you put in is actually about equal. So yes, you're like beauty and chaos. Yes, yes. I almost beauty can't tell chaos. if you're trying to win or if you're just trying to like be like the super villain of this. Like, you, you literally went for every His worst face. ingredient. I don't think it looks like a pizza. It's definitely shocking. Yeah. Oh my god. It's <laughs> <laughs> it looks like this pizza's gonna slice you. Yeah. Is it pizza? There, it's dough with the most disliked ingredients of pizza on it, which That's I true. think makes it a pizza. It that in itself should be enough. Yeah. Is it evil? It's evil. Yeah, I'm a Disney villain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely evil. Yeah. 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 It's like yeah. 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 He did it. He's a Disney villain. Yeah. It's Koala Deville. <laughs> <laughs> the male Koala Deville. Judges, we've seen New York. We've seen Italy. We've seen hell. <laughs> we've seen hell. <laughs> but we haven't seen Chicago. Hey. Chicago brings a totally different kind of pizza to the table. I'm going to bring it to you. I hope you're excited and ready for some delicious Chicago style deep dish. 1,000. Let's do this. Let's do it. Oh Ooh. my. Goodness gracious. I took the flavors of Chicago's Italian combo sandwich and tried to infuse it into the pizza as well. It the combo sandwich sucks. is Italian sausage, Italian beef, but still sweet looks and good. or spicy jardinera, uh, sweet bell peppers and uh, cheeses. And then some of the cheeses people use would be mozzarella, provolone, or romano. I'm using them all. And of course it has the traditional uh, crunchy crust around the side. A little bit of cornmeal on the bottom just to make sure it uh, separates from the cast iron. I hope you like it. Presentation, look at that. Just like the city of Chicago, very beautiful. Uh, <laughs> big, strong, big, bold. Strong. Architecture. Clean. Yeah, you uh, got the whole skyline. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The whole skyline. Somewhat deep dish, right? Yeah. yeah. The it's dish like could a, have been a little deeper. Say it's a, a glass half full. The crust is separating from the actual pizza. That kind of that has to be hard because it's so thick in the front end, but so thin in the back. So you see the separation between church and state? <laughs> That's what's happening here. I'm ready to dig in. Yeah. Ooh, let's go for it. So, I don't know which, who's the best part, the judges or the, the try guys themselves. I don't know which one's the best. I don't know which one's funnier. Keith, educate me. Yeah. Where do you start? Well, it's up to you. I would start right in the center. Typically, a deep dish pizza, the first bite is the best. Start in the middle. Give me your thoughts. What do you think? You've eaten it. Do you eat the middle of 
Um, I like it. I, I meant the middle, the tip. Just start like pizza. Eat it like pizza. Quick. Oh, it's like a pizza. Yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. It's like a pizza. You said the middle, oh. Keith. That means the middle of the slice. Well, he doesn't have a bite. He has a slice. So, so how did like... the first bite be in the middle? Exactly. That's why it was a confusing. I think he was confused. <laughs> it tastes good. I like the thickness, two C's of the of the red sauce. I think it's it gives it a little bit more of that full mouth feel. I think it needs a little bit more cheese. There's like just too much tomato sauce. Crust is good, but it does look a little thick. Oh no. But the taste is excellent. It's a good mix of the the sausage and I really like the addition of the jardiner in there. I wanna hate it so bad. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I can't help myself. There's a lot of clout involved yeah, in yeah. the guy eating a Chicago well, slice. That's really freaking good, Keith. Yeah, thanks. You've clearly made it before, which I think gives you an obvious leg up in the <laughs> without a recipe competition. Dude, that's really f***ing delicious. Mmm. Meat's good. That's really good. Need more tea. That looks good. Really good. Flames are great. Mm -hmm. The only thing I would say is that creativity-wise, like I like the idea of combining it all together, but this is clearly something that's in your wheelhouse. Is it a pizza? Yeah, it's a, pizza. it's a pizza. All right. <laughs> I expected a little more controversy. At least it's a pizza. Well, judges, you've now had four slices, each beautiful in their own way. We shall give you a little bit of time to decide the champion. First up, we had Zach's Mo Crusts, less pizza. <laughs> okay, I like how basic the pepperoni pizza was and how bougie the fake pizza was. I think the biggest downside to this pizza was just how unruly the crust was and the fact that it just looked like he burritoed the dough. <laughs> Next up, we have Ned's 24-hour pizza clock. Each individual slice is something <laughs> different and unique, mm -hmm. which I think is actually really cool. The only thing about this that I was like a little disturbed by is that I have no idea what you all tasted. Yeah, we all got something a little different on that one. Feels a little That's gonna be the hardest or frozen. To judge. Yeah. The bottom is, it's just not cooked all the way through. Best in show, for sure, was <laughs> Eugene's pizza. I just like the idea that Eugene was willing to throw away his chances at winning to make something that was so audacious and insane that people will talk about it. If there was gonna be a meme to be made of any of these pizzas, it definitely would be Eugene's. Last the up, we have Keith's Deep space. Dish Chicago Pizza. The presentation? leaves a load to be desired. But I, I mean, Keith's obviously made pizzas before and I thought this was actually a really good tasting pizza and had all the elements in there and the sauce was good. It had a little bit of tanginess as well. The parts that we were able to try, it was good. Definitely not New York's pizza. Definitely not New York's pizza. What you guys did today was definitely not an easy accomplishment. You guys pulled it off today and it was nice getting to try your pizzas. This was really up in the air. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It was really hard to who figure knows? out. We had a tough time with this who one. Who would be fourth, but you know, Eugene, I'm sorry. Oh. Eugene? <laughs> no! You did have one of the best presentations, but as far as pizza. Eugene just did a JoJo pose. Is that a JoJo reference? I don't know if you were trying to win this week, <laughs> but you did make a pizza. What I'm hearing is it wasn't evil enough. Now, it was really difficult between these last three to decide who ultimately was in third place. And third place pizza goes to Ned. Oh! What? Did I the 12 hour, like the 24 hour one? Am I right? I think he did the twenty the twenty four hour pizza. <laughs> what? I made you a pizza clock. Oh my gosh! What time is it? Oh, what okay. time is it? <laughs> we all of us thought that the creativity was certainly top notch, and if it was just based on creativity, you may have gotten first. This sure. is historic. <laughs> Never before has it come down to Keith and Zach. Yeah, can you, you switch spots? <laughs> My heart is beating like this crazy. Is crazy. <laughs> I this is crazy. crazy. How many do I need, you guys? I, don't know. I literally like my heart's beating so fast Hello. and my stomach is beating. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Uh, please keep the chat in English. Uh, some people who are watching are international. Thank you. Yes. Keith. Yes, Quasi. It comes down to you two. New York versus Chicago. One of these New York versus Chicago. Well, familiar. I feel like I was home. Yeah. The flavors, the taste, the other pizza, foreign, different, new.
keep in mind the familiar, still explosively <laughs> creative. And both of these pieces was fantastic. <laughs> but one of these pieces, it edged out the other. Brooklyn, New York, I love you. Keith, you're the winner. Chicago won. Oh my god, he looks like he's having a stroke. a journey. <laughs> so many thirds, so many fourths. I thought my highest achievement this season would be a single second place, but I, I finally did it. I clawed my way up. Ah! Oh my god, I can't even be mad about this. I'm f***ing stoked, man. So creativity really doesn't matter. <laughs> Really so we've got one matter. week left, and it's the most challenging week of all. It's cheesecake. Which one of us Ooh, will accidentally cheesecake. poison the judges? Stay tuned to see. And our new movie came out today. Oh, shit. Uh, today, right now, you guys can go check it out at tryguys.com slash movie. It's all about how we secretly hate each other. Well, well, Ooh, or do, or do we? Hate each other. Stay tuned to find out. Oh, that was great. Um, do you guys have anything else you want me to watch? That was good. If you guys have any suggestion for me to watch, please leave it in the chat. Because this is good. Dumplings. This one? Am I right? Is it this one? The Try Guys Cook Dumplings Without a Recipe? Okay. I think this is the most cooking I've ever seen you do. It's because he critiques when I make something, so he wants it to be done a certain way. It's not that I can't cook, it's just he wants to cook. Do all the, the tasty cooking. way. What? Welcome to Without a Recipe, the cooking show where contestants have no experience, no instructions, and probably no hope. It's okay. a sad excuse for no Oh my gosh. <laughs> Brownies, dumplings, pizza, and the grand finale, cheesecake. We're not just doing sweet, we're doing savory. And bitches, I can cook. Keith might not get mad. Jesus <laughs> Christ. I might not put alcohol in my food. Oh man, this is like home. You excited? Well, buckle up, because there's disasters ahead, and there's no turning back now. Since this, since this one is like kind of long, I will probably make this the last video I'm gonna watch today, but I have no regrets. These guys are so hilarious. By now you may have heard that the Try Guys have made a movie and it is called Behind the Try, a Try Guys documentary. You can be the first person to see it by getting tickets now to the Try Guys live event world premiere. There's gonna be a red carpet, special guests, special surprises, live performances, you bet you. And for all the information you need, it's more at right tryguys.com. Oh, have you watched it already? I think it's about time we wrap this up. Just like those dumplings. Woo! Enjoy the show! The Try Guys are back in the test kitchen for Without a Recipe. To kick off this season, they're making dumplings. I broke it! It's okay! Let's go for it! What's your strategy this time, Ned? F*** it up! <laughs> You know, 2020, the world's upside down. Everything's crazy, which means I'm gonna f***ing win. I've f***ed up a lot in this series. Do we have anything that can help me? I flew water over the country for you. I'm the defending season champion, what? which means I get to be the, the sassy punch. villain. You know, look, I read the YouTube comments. I didn't really appreciate that my dishes got called not creative. So this season, I'm getting creative. So some might say, Eugene, maybe you should like not put alcohol in everything. Maybe you shouldn't make things totally crazy. Mm. Now, I'm just gonna go totally left field. So last season, I was pretty adversarial with the judges. You couldn't even have it. How could you even have a vote? I 
like just putting too much xanthan gum? I took a risk, right? Daddy's favorite. I wanted to honor my father. That didn't work out, so no more honoring my father. <laughs> Each of the Try Guys will have two hours to make a dumpling of their choice. Then, the next day, they will cook and present them to our panel of judges. God, why didn't I do this? Why does the middle one look so this familiar? Is, this, is the, this is the way you do it. You, know, you gotta be able to feel it. I'm Rosanna Pantino. I'm a YouTuber. That's, also, I'm that's why. It's I'm Rosanna. I know food. I am, I'm a fellow foodie here. So I was a judge on last season, and um, there was a lot going on first season, so I can't wait for the second. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, my name's Matt McLean. I'm Eugene's boyfriend, and I think an excellent home cook. I think I'm better than all of these guys, so that's why I'm here to judge uh, all these guys. Guys to rip these dumplings apart. <laughs> Matt, every wow. time you watch without a recipe, you're upset. Yes, you guys are horrible. <laughs> Matt's you guys are horrible. There's a reason I don't put him in videos. He watches these videos and only says terrible things. He's kind of like the Gordon Ramsay of the uh, Try Guys group. But he might want to make Eugene lose, which is exciting. My name is uh, Perry Chung. I'm the chef owner of Dumpling Monster in West Hollywood. I'm very curious to see what kind of dumplings these guys come up with today. Dumpling Monster has been open since February of 2019. Growing up in an Asian family household, uh, making dumplings is just, it's just kind of a thing that we always did. Like mom would just make dumplings during the holidays or uh, usually a lot of gatherings. But professionally making dumplings, I've been making dumplings for- I'm pretty sure every Asian country kind of does this, like their own type of dumpling. Here in the Philippines, we have one, but it's not like the conventional shape. It's called shawmai. But I think it's kind of like dumpling. It's not the traditional shape, but it's still really good. For the past eight to nine years. The fun part about dumplings is there's really no origination from where it comes. There's different types of dumplings. There's uh, Korean dumplings, there's Japanese gyozas, Chinese dumplings, Taiwanese dumplings. You know, even Italians, they have a sort of a dumpling, which is like the ravioli. To start, we're gonna be making our dough, and then after that, we'll move on to the filling and the dipping sauces. All right, bakers, three, three two, two, one. Let's make some dumps. I'm gonna do high gluten. I'm pretty sure it needs to be like tensile. All-purpose flour, high gluten flour, but let's try one of each. Here's what I know about making dumpling dough, is you cover a table in a pile of flour and you crack eggs into it and then you stir right. it with your finger. Right, right, from the top down. Is that yeah, how you make it? I see it on the internet all the time. I've made dumplings so many That's times as a kid, a but what? I'm not making Asian-style dumplings, so we'll see what happens. I will be making what I am calling a Texas barbecue dumpling. See, I am Asian, but I'm also very Texan. So I've decided to squish together my two worlds into the perfect little food. So I'm taking everything that you might find at a Texas barbecue joint and trying to shove it all into one little dumpling. Zach, you're making Asian dumplings, aren't you? I'm making an Asian inspired vegan dumpling. They're gonna have tofu, a little bit of walnuts. Now I'm making vegan dumplings, which puts me at a flavor vegan disadvantage. Dumplings. So I'm gonna try and compensate. I'm gonna put kimchi in my dumpling. Dumplings, I'm gonna try and put some pineapple in my dumplings. I want just that little kick of sweetness. I'm making New Orleans style crawfish dumplings. It's gonna have Cajun seasoning and Dewey sausage and a little bit of seafood gumbo inside. My aunt, I don't know if you knew this, but she has a Cajun restaurant in New York City. I've always enjoyed Cajun food and my aunt's restaurant has been really hard hit with COVID. Yeah, I'm just thinking of her when I make this recipe. Well, I am making a breakfast Everyone's sandwich inspired COVID. dumpling, a little turkey, sausage, egg, and cheese in a dumpling. We love reinventing breakfast, but have people done breakfast dumplings? Because Rosanna does not eat pork, I'll be using a turkey breakfast sausage. It'll be wrapped up and then it's gonna be boiled or steamed. One or two, I'm gonna decide in the moment. Today we're gonna to be making um, pork and chive dumplings. We're gonna be using um, AP flour and cake flour because it's a little more common for everyone to try at home. So I'm gonna start mm -hmm. on a low setting just to get uh, all the dough mixed up and then I'm gonna slowly add the water Use in. Water. I know that you put egg and water in it. I've got my dough, my Old Bay infused flour and salt mixture. Now I'm gonna make a little circle. See, I, I'm wondering if I should like think of my dough like a pancake a little bit. I don't know if you've had the greatest fat 
fast food invention of all time, the McRiddle. But I have, the and there is something to that breakfast sausage sandwich with sweetness. Hmm. So what's your strategy this season? I've gone on a real journey between last season and this, you know? I'm a flavor man now. You're I, a flavor I made, man. I made a tea line. I've had a whole culinary adventure. I'm here to take my he learnings and apply tea? it to the world of without a recipe, you know? I don't want to make something boring. I'm not Ned. <laughs> I brought the whole plate oh my out God, the I intend on putting approximately nine eggs. Hey, it's worked for Eugene. I don't know. I'm taking what I know from making pasta. You got it right, Ned. I need more eggs. This is not enough eggs. Not enough liquid going on over here. Guys, it's 2020. Anything is possible. This season is going to be so different. We're all going different directions. Like, I might not put alcohol in anything. So you're telling me you're not going to put alcohol in anything you're doing? Well, we'll see. But I'm trying to, you know... I'm trying to surprise the audience, you know? God, why didn't I do this in a bowl? <laughs> no, dude, this is, the this, is the, this is the way you do it. Fire, you know, you gotta be able to feel it. Look, dumplings have been made for thousands of years just <laughs> like this. Uh, I'm not gonna lie, I'm maybe around the too many egg side. <laughs> yeah. So to the dough, I added some salt, some canola oil. Right now, all the flour has come together, but typically the question is how long do you work the dough? Um, I would say probably about seven to 10 minutes. I think in seasons past, I've damned myself by by not knowing when to quit. So I'm going to say that I don't want to overwork this dough. I'm done. I'm gonna make another one. You're gonna make another one? Yeah, I'm gonna oh, try one with the, the gluten. gluten. Zach, this is the what did you just say about knowing when to quit? Well, I know when to quit on this one. That's the AP dough. It did so well in, in history and science, but now we're gonna try some high gluten because I feel like high gluten will be stickier and you need your dumpling wrapper to be sticky. You know, between the Old Bay and the egg, mine is kind of this like interesting orange texture. Yeah, yours is very pretty. I need more flour. <laughs> I thought I needed more eggs. I, I put too I, many eggs I in. I also need more flour, I think. Look at this. So much. That's gonna fall. Yeah, do, here, do, I'm coming over, baby. Don't no, you hand. worry. Need the extra hand. <laughs> what the heck? Wait, you wanna go more than that? A little bit more. Okay. Alright, that's good. I'm concerned at how stringy this is. <laughs> is there something else that I should be putting in here? You can feel mine if I can feel yours. Yeah, 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 of course. Oh yeah, yours is much softer than mine. Oh wow, yours is much harder than mine. Hmm. I did notice that our doughs are already very different. Mine is sticky and gooey, yours is hard and firm. We'll see what happens. We now Which move on to the fillings. Correct. Ned? The juicy, the delicious, the little burst of flavor inside the dumpling. So while the dough is resting, uh, we're gonna work on our filling right now. I got some green Chinese chives, which is uh, very, very fragrant. What I have here also is a green onion and ginger. And what I like to make is like a ginger scallion water mix, which is something that I'll work into the filling. So to this, I'm gonna add about a cup of water. You gonna put that in the filling? Oh, what do we have in the fridge? Okay, we've got good. tofu. So I think I bit off more than I can chew conceptually because I'm trying to shove an entire Texas That's barbecue so much that usually takes a day or two days into an hour and a half of cooking. If you're doing Texas barbecue, you gotta have brisket. So I'm gonna try to make brisket even though we don't have enough time to properly braise or smoke it. So it's gonna be brisket meat at least. And I'm also gonna put in some baked pinto beans, maybe refried. I'm gonna put in collard greens because you gotta have collard greens. See already, this sounds like crazy. And potato salad. You can't have barbecue without potato salad. So I'm also putting potatoes in there. Kay. I'm just gonna make my, my dry rub for my brisket. Oh! Are I love peppers? soup dumplings. Mm -hmm. Oh, don't we all? So I kind of want to inject some like beef broth, like maybe there's like a little burst of like brown gravy in there. Ooh. So when it comes to soup dumplings, it's a little more difficult. I want to say it's about a two to three day process. There is gelatin involved, which means you have to cook a broth and then need the gelatin to set so that you can get these little jelly pieces in there. The margin for error is, is, is uh, very, very, very slim. I don't know how you get soup in a soup dumpling. I imagine, you know, maybe I get like a little syringe and just sort of like squirt it in at the end. So I'm gonna be making a little sausage, egg, and cheese situation. I've got some turkey sausage. It's turkey, turkey breakfast sausage. sausage, but I don't know how seasoned it is, and I also can't eat it raw to find out because mm. it's turkey. Oh, right, and I have to make two different versions for Rosanna. Oh, right, yes, and I'm also oh, sure. working for... Rosanna better appreciate what we're doing here today. Yeah. Because we altered our recipes for Rosanna Pancino because she doesn't eat pork, and that's fine. That's fine, but, you know, I wanted to make pork. I like pork. I've also got some kimchi. So you're gonna put kimchi in your dumplings? Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna try kind of crazy flavor. Hey, kimchi on your dumplings? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've got about uh, two pounds of pork. Uh, 
I like to get um, a fat content of about 30%. Uh, the leaner the meat, the harder for the flavor to carry over. Usually mm. what makes dumplings so so amazing is um, fat that carries over the flavors. I have about a tablespoon of sugar, light soy sauce. I say about an ounce, sesame oil, vegetarian oyster sauce, a little cornstarch. The cornstarch will act to kind of help um, keep everything binded together. And over here I have some white pepper, which will give it a nice little uh, spice. What I'm doing is I'm gonna dry all this tofu out and then I'm basically just gonna crumble it. Oh, I'm stressed. It's okay, Eugene. Believe in yourself. So normally I would boil the potatoes, I would saute the collard greens. It's gonna take too long. What if I put them, what if I one pot it? What if I- One pot? So you can be like, but those things go in the cooker because they one pot. You could be the one pot man. Oh my God. I've worked for 10 minutes and I've gotten Five crawfish. I need to speed this up. All right, so I'm gonna put oh, my dry rub on my brisket. I watch a lot of cooking shows, so I know how people do things. I just don't personally do them often. But. <laughs> well, cause okay, so your partner Matt is a phenomenal cook. He cooks every day. So this is kind of like a nice opportunity for you to return the favor. I guess I was first joking that I wasn't gonna take this seriously, but I'm realizing I'm making dumplings that are both Asian and Texan inspired, which is my identity, for my boyfriend who cooks. So if I lose, then I'm shaming not only myself but my ancestors and my partner and the gay community. <laughs> Your past, present, and future. Yeah, basically this is a gay rights and challenge future. and I gotta He's step up. He's shaming all of them in one day. No, okay. what? Oh, but I've just spent my whole hour making crawfish. We can do this, we just gotta work a little faster. This is the last one. Uh, there's nothing like garlic and oil sauteing that makes you <laughs> Horny? I don't, what, I don't know what else to say, but it's so delicious. Would you yeah. believe that that whole bowl of crawfish just produced this much? Are you f***ing kidding me? Well, I that ate, is almost That's ate so a little. Oh, yeah, I ate some of it too. Um, who are these? Japanese peanuts with chili. That could be fun. No, 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 no. Zach, control. I'm gonna try it. Control. No, 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 no. But let me just try the snack. Oh, that is so spicy. So Woo! don't. You're not putting that. You're dumpling, right? I'm gonna try. Woo! You're gonna put it in? that on his Yeah, dumpling? because I want a spice of sorts. Why don't you just use one of the spices? Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> because this, is a, this already is spiced. Yeah, but then you're also putting nuts in your dumplings. I already have. I have walnuts in my dumplings. Yeah, you don't need more nuts in it. You're nuts. You're nuts. You can never have too much nuts, nuts, nuts in a dumpling. In. I'm thinking about it. Well, I know that Eugene has made them several times, so I think every part of the way he'll know what he's doing. He's got a crazy idea. I don't think it'll work. And I liked Zach's until he said pineapple. Now, Eugene, kimchi and pineapple. Yeah. What do you think? I think that's a um, really interesting combo, kimchi but you know what? Pineapple. Kimchi is surprisingly good together with mm. things. Confusing. Like good confusing? Yeah. Is it making you <laughs> horny? So I give this a good little mix over here, and then from here, I'm gonna add some cabbage. Usually for a water dumpling, it's kind of nice to have a cabbage. It's naturally sweet. I need a little bit of cabbage. Just a little bit of cabbage. I feel like all good dumplings have a little bit of cabbage. Breakfast sandwiches don't tend to have cabbage, but dumplings do. So it's a little about taking some things from the world and also honoring the world itself. Do we have red wine here? It is so funny that I just realized that I could put red wine in the sprays, and that would actually be correct. The one time I never decided to put alcohol in something, Glug, 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 The face. The face oh, he man. made. It's just like home. Back to it. Back to the basics. I love a good cheddar on top of the breakfast sandwich. Smell this. Does this smell like a football party or what? Oh, it smells like a football party. It smells like a football party over here. This is still wet. Shit. Dude, all my stuff is so wet. I'm basically doing the rub into the um, soupy concoction just to make sure that there's a lot of infusion of spice. So I'm gonna let this pot sit and it's just gonna stew. So for dumplings, we kind of want everything that to kind of hold together. So if you're working with a meat filling, if you cook it, it won't hold together. It'll kind of fall apart and, and not really bind together. Ned, cast me up on what you're doing over here. Well, Keith, I got some okra, I got some onions, some mushrooms, some chives. Is that even gonna and work? this is my aunt. And do we sausage? Oh, let me take a piece of that. Mm. Oh, yum. And I'm gonna saute it all in a pan and try and kind of make some gravy in it. Whoa, I, I just put really... raw meat in a bowl. That seems a lot easier. <laughs> but I'm taking a risk, right? Because it might not be cooked all the way and then I'll kill somebody. These are canned beans. I thought they would be raw, which is good because I don't have time to cook beans, but I think I'm just gonna do refried beans. Tofu, green onion, pineapple, kimchi, 
walnut, pepper, Japanese That's pepper, so and salt. miso. Let's mix that up. Okay, I'm gonna bring this down to more of a simmer. I think I actually have time to cook this. So I've got my crawfish with my Cajun seasoning. I've got my onion, okra, mushroom, delicious veggie blend. This meat is done. I'm ready to set it aside. I'm gonna add the eggs tomorrow. Gonna like scramble them in. But right now I'm gonna work on what this flavor needs to dip into. I'm gonna add that ginger scallion water that I worked on. And the more water you get away with in Ooh. here, the juicier your dumpling and, and the looser your dumpling will be. Uh, be careful not to add too much water. Otherwise you have to find more meat to, to bind it back together. This mm. is so wet. It's like sopping wet. So I'm gonna try and dry it. Is that Here's my pineapple? fear is that if I dry the kimchi too much, much am I taking away the flavor? So my first thought is simply to add some hot sauce to maple syrup and call it a day, but that's not enough. So I'm gonna get a little bit of ginger, a little maple syrup. So when it comes to dumplings, dumplings do need a sauce. Uh, right now we're gonna be working on a chili soy sauce, but here I have one cup of light soy sauce, half a cup of water. Here I have some sambal chili sauce to give it a little heat, fresh ginger to give it that ginger taste because uh, every dumpling sauce has a really nice um, level ginger taste to it. Test meal, chili oil I'll have just to add a little more spice. And then here we go, is the vegetarian stir fry sauce, which um, it's Damn. about an ounce and a half to two ounces. And then I also add some um, sesame seeds. Uh, I'm gonna add a little burger sauce. It's, I just know that it's really good on breakfast sandwiches. So this is where my vinegar element is coming burger in. Burger sauce? Half hour, oh, I don't need that. Shoot, I need, mm, I'm getting. All right, well, beans are pretty much ready to go. I'm gonna start on my sauce. Oh, and shit, in the 20 minutes we have to make our sauce too? Oh, shit! Are you, are you gonna have time for barbecue sauce? That's what you're sauce. doing right now? I'm doing it right now. Things. Some pretty important ingredients. All I know is you for sure need Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire. Yeah, you got a lot of flavors. Are you worried that it's gonna be too flavorful? Absolutely. <laughs> But also, all of them taste great. That's true. I mean, I like flavors. All right, because time is running out, I'm gonna make my sauce. Four, five, six. One, two, three. Done. That's a really nice way of measuring stuff, I guess. It's gonna be so inaccurate, but still a way. Just I f***ing every camera. I wanna f I f cameras with you. Here, you wanna do it together? Okay, and a cam. And my cam. And nice. your cam. And this close up one. You're doing a lot less and it's working a lot less. <laughs> That's usually how one has confidence. Ability? <laughs> I think I'm all done. I think I'm in a happy place. A good chef knows when to stop. Well, I gotta dump in my wow, dump in the crawfish meat because I only have 14 minutes here. Oh wow. Ah, oh, that smells good, man. Golly! Mm. That smells mm. good. Mm. I fucking nailed this barbecue sauce, y'all. Oh my god. F measurements. I was just like, boom, F bam, fizzow. I'm afraid, I don't know that the ratio is right. So this is tofu, pineapple, kimchi, kimchi. green That's onion, not hold. miso, spicy peanuts, walnuts, ginger, garlic. That's not gonna I hold. I experiment with this beef That's broth. That's not gonna hold oh inside. God. You're gonna put it into the veggie stock? I'm just gonna try. I'm just gonna experiment. We have 10 minutes left. We are down to the wire. With all of my braised ingredients, I'm gonna stick it in this blender and try to get it to like a nice even mince. I want more kimchi. Yeah, hey, I feel like my ratio's off. I've got too much tofu. Too much tofu? Yeah, it's like, it's overpowering it. I need that, that, that interesting crunch. Last season you were a star. What's your strategy this time, Ned? F*** it up. <laughs> Fuck it up. You've got some great strong flavors going on over here. It smells amazing. It looks this good. Looks I'm like fishing for a McDonald's sponsorship. Da 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 da. Hey. Ow! <laughs> oh my god. Down to the wire, bud. I'm freaking out, man! What are you doing over there? I'm trying to figure out how this comes on. Oh! More beef stuff. More beef stock, really? I don't know what to do. I guess I can start cleaning, you know, help the transition. You got it, man. I broke it. It's okay. Let's go for it. Did it's I break okay, it? Eugene. Eugene, we're number one. Dude, we're doing so good. All right, I guess I'm hand chopping this. Wow, it smells like New Orleans down here. Ooh, Except Orleans. with all the, you know, vomit in the street. No. Oh, well, I don't know if you've been to New Orleans. That place is crazy. They party. More ginger. Yeah, you know, maybe it's the a side. It's good. There this amazing. can be even chunkier, so it gives it like you know, you can really tell there's meats. We're just chopping. We're just chopping. I mean, I think you achieved what you were looking for. It's got a gravy looking. Yes, yeah, it looks like some, a gumbo. Some gravy texture. Mmm. If I were really going for like a soup, I would have just kept adding broth, but yeah. uh, I still got it fit in the piece of dumpling. Yeah, I know. All right, I think, God, I am sweating. Hands up, bakers, hands up. 
Winners. Just about did it. It's the next morning. The Try Guys have one hour to fill their dumplings and cook them in front of the judges. Good morning! Oh, in front of the right, judges? Judge, you make some dumplings? Do last yes, time. So. Let's dump it up. Our doughs look Your doughs look like very different. Have... Did y'all put egg in yours? Yeah, yeah. of course we did. did you, you didn't? Mm -mm. We put a lot of egg. We're making spaghetti, right? <laughs> so now that our dough's been resting, uh, we're gonna take a look at it. It should give it like a nice little springy, but we were gonna take this out, just work it a little bit. One very important thing about uh, dough is you just need to keep it covered so that way it doesn't dry out. I feel like my dough is way too wet. <laughs> yeah, my dough is pretty squishy. So I've actually got two doughs I'm working with. This one is a, a high gluten, and this one is a all purpose. Oh, you're making a bagel? No, I'm just doing what my mom used to do. She makes a bagel? I'm just doing what Eugene's mom a used bagel. to do. I'm gonna watch Eugene's a bagel mom. Dumpling. Everyone's just gonna copy nice. me. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. So right now I'm looking for a dough that kind of keeps its shape. We're gonna roll this out and start forming the little balls. So here I formed a log of dough. I'm probably gonna try to go for about 10 grams of dough. Just make my way down. Why does this remind me of something? Ew. Ew. Oh, oh no. Oh no. Yeah, it's a gross snake. Well, I think I made pretty good pasta. And what is a dumpling other than a ravioli? I think you're absolutely right. So I'm finishing making my filling right now. I'm adding some egg. Also, you know, there's already egg in the dough, so it's really gonna be that breakfast sandwich vibe. It's crazy, like, how fast I've seen people do it and how much effort it's taking me to do just one of these. Yeah, you know, well, my masters, mom and my so... aunt and my grandma would make dumplings a lot and I'd sit and help, and this is uh, probably the most nostalgic for me. This part is rolling out the dough and then filling it. What was the food for y'all growing up that you did with your family? Uh, grilled chicken. <laughs> 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 and then from here, we're just gonna do a light dusting on top just so it doesn't stick your hand. Press it down, and what you're looking for is like these little uh, mini discs. So we're gonna get all these ready. But here we have a little hand rolling pin, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna just roll it down part way and then just start forming the edges. The edges I like to keep thin, um, but the, the center, we're gonna keep it a little stronger because that's where we need to place the filling to kind of stretch it out. Now, one thing I don't really know is how why. I kind of I feel like I did that before dogs. when I was a child. I think I'm making mine slightly larger because of how much filling I have. That's true. I'm making mine, they're gonna be called Xiao Long Bao Chicka Bao Wow. Fucking fun. I really focus on bad the integrity pun. of the wrapper, so I wanna make sure that this is like as perfect as I can get it before I fill it. My fear is that they're gonna break in the cook. So as a beginner, typically you would probably go to the store and get the wrapper, but as this becomes a hobby, you know, it took me three months to pick up this technique. Um, sometimes it takes longer, and to be honest, even my technique is not perfect, uh, but uh, you just gotta keep trying. Oh wow, mine really congealed overnight. This has been sitting overnight. Let's see if it tastes That looks good. like it kind it's of confusing. Like curry. I can't say that I love it. I'm not allowed to add anything to this right now, right? Sure, of course. You have 35 minutes. I would add more pineapple to this. Here we have a filling stick, which is what we use at Dumpling Monsters because uh, the wood, the bamboo wood, doesn't really stick to the meat. You don't want too much filling because otherwise Ooh. your dumpling is not going to cook in time before the dough finishes co cooking. I should be measuring this by weight with the scale, but I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> Tuck in that's gonna be, a little that's pineapple a baby. It almost looks like someone vomited an al pastor taco. Yeah, I'm trying to wrap one. A little dumpling dough. Oh, it looks like a little empanada. Yeah, it looks little, cute. Little dumpling do. Yeah, and here we're wrapping empanada. the dumplings that we're doing to boil. You really need a perfect seal for dumplings boiled dumplings really because like uh, that, it's going to be surrounded by water. The technique for this is crimping your hands in the center, giving a nice big squeeze, and you have yourself a little dumpling here. I think my dumpies are too thick. Yeah, I know. Yeah, it's, it's really tough thick. to get this dough right. Uh, definitely in my end. Pieces are like super doughy. This is some beef broth. I'm gonna see broth. if I can inject it in and make soup dumplings. What? <laughs> what? what is he doing? <laughs> Me trying to get the soup situation going. Wow, is that uh -oh. how they do that? I don't is know. He, it is isn't, in... but I'm loving it. That's the cool. Don't tell me he's here is out Oh my god, he is. Ned. Thank you. I feel good about honoring the shape. This is how my mom and grandma used to make it. The, this is like just the basic crimping method. I'm nervous that the deep frying is gonna open them up, but we'll see. Oh, you can see it fill up. Oh, yeah. When I, I left all my tortillas stacked, over time as they became more room temperature, they became one. So I'm taking that opportunity to make some hilariously large Dumplings. I've had a revelation. I think that the acid a really of the pineapple cooked dumpling. this overnight in a way that has made it foul. Oh no. Oh, that's not good. I am no longer confident. 
All right, 10 minutes, bakers. 10 minutes. Uh, I think I'm ready to cook. I'm feeling pretty confident. The only thing that does worry me is that I have to cook this turkey all the way through. And the judges are gonna watch us for the first time cook these. Yeah. When it comes to steaming a dumpling, you're kind of waiting for the dumpling to kind of puff up. You have to have a good seal, because if you don't have a good seal now, in your dumpling like during the puff up process, uh, That's the dumpling can puff looks and like open. The if the dumpling is too big, then the inside might not cook all the way. Okay, so with my dumpinadas finished, we've got Ned making some shoe mine, some little floor over there, they look nice. We've got a little fortune cookie action coming out of Zach. And Eugene, who has stressed on his, his dough quality, is making the perfect looking dumplings. And so yeah, much leftover barbecue good. for me to eat. <laughs> what an incredible day it is here in the Without a Recipe kitchen. One minute. One minute. Okay, this is it. Last chance. I think I'm gonna make one or two more and I'm I'm happy with this. Very unsure if my seal is actually sealed correctly. I'm actually now nervous about any steaming because there's already so much moisture in here. So I may just stop at pan frying. Ten, nine, nine eight, seven, six. They all five, look different in four, a way. Four, three, two, one. Hands up, baker jumpling! Oh. Did they just throw one? Today we're going to be judging on oh, four cute. things. Taste, presentation, creativity, and is it a dumpling? So today, as a first, we're actually going to get to watch the guys cook so we can critique them in the process. So let's get cooking. <laughs> Ooh. All right, so we've got our judges watching over there. We've got the other two Try Guys watching us over here. And but we've got God watching us above. All love right. God. Uh, <laughs> this, uh, uh, it's the main show. We've got our dumplings. We've 20 got 20 minutes, minutes on, on the, the clock. clock. Ooh, not much. Here we go. We don't have a margin for error here. I like want mine to really feel I'll like, you know, a country crawfish oh. boil. So yeah, I'm serving mine with a little bit of corn. My gut well, tells that, me like cook this for well, like six minutes and then add some water, though? but they're frozen. So I might do it like closer to. 10. We're gonna start on our pan fried dumplings right now. Uh, we're gonna put a little oil down there um, on a heated pan. And then from here, once the oil is in, we're gonna drop our dumplings in here. Uh, I'm gonna be steaming mine. I think the appropriate amount is eight minutes. I think it goes pretty quickly. Oh my God, there's so much steam. <laughs> Get that corn in there. The camera's gotta be steamed up by now. Crossbar. I've had cooking from everyone else except for Zach. So I'm really wow. interested Ooh. to see how his turn out. Pop that cherry. Zach, the wild card. Oh no. Having some difficulty getting my dumplings. Dad, yeah, what's going on? I'm having some difficulty getting my dumplings off of parchment. Some of them have really souped up here. Steamed dumpling Parchment's is like pretty nonsense. much easier than the boiled dumpling. Um, you just need to make sure that you have a parchment paper or some sort of cabbage, so that way the dumpling will not stick to the steamer basket. Oh god, they're all sticking. Take off this one. Oh, Ned. Ned or no. Was that that's that's gross. Gross. I saw soggy bottom leak some soup. Yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and say that putting the soup in, it's got a real chance of messing me up. All right, I've got my dumplings arranged here. Six pork and four without pork. We're gonna bring our heat down to a medium, and now we're gonna add some water. So what you're looking for is the water to kind of just all come out completely, and what's left is the oil. From there, it should crisp up. Here's where Zach learns what happens nice. when you mix water and hot oil <laughs> and cover it. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm baby. Steamed. Woo! Let's have an explosion. It's an innovative frying and steaming. I don't have much time. We got what? Ten minutes? These are my first ones. These are the test. I'm gonna learn from these and I'm gonna do it again. Ned, how do they look? They look good and they are coming off the paper way easier now that they're cooked. And for the pan fried dumplings, I like to have the sauce on the side because um, if you put the soy sauce on, you lose all that crispiness from the moisture it's kind from of the making me dumpling hungry, sauce. To be honest. And this is our pan fried dumpling. Wow, these are perfect colors. Look at that. That's perfect. Ten seconds. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Done. Yay. Wow. A valuable effort from uh, our boys. <laughs> Judges, oh I'm so pleased so to present my New Orleans style Cajun crawfish dumplings. I call them my country dumpkins. <laughs> <laughs> wow, that's a good name. The inside is a, it should taste like a crawfish gumbo. Uh, Rosanna, yours does not have andouille pork sausage, but you guys have Thank pork you. sausage in there as well. There's some okra, onions, mushrooms, and uh, I mix a little Old Bay seasoning into the dumpling dough. 
It's served with a corn on the cob and garlic butter, just like a country crawfish boil. <laughs> this is really creative, right? Out, right? I've never seen this. It's definitely creative. <laughs> All right, here we go. Um, and I should mention, they're soup dumplings. It's definitely interesting. <laughs> I think there's some cheese. Is there top. cheese in here? No, no cheese. Oh, okay. There's something there's a, stretchy in here. That's probably the okra, yeah. The texture's a little odd. I wish the spice was in the dumpling and not in the wrapper, because it makes it kind of an unattractive color. Unattractive. It's what's on the inside that counts. I get it. It's it's a, It actually tastes very um, southern. The skin texture, though, is just a little on the heavy side. Why is it so tough? I'm Italian, so I know how to make pasta, so right it's on. a... Uh, it's an egg-based uh, dumpling dough. I think it was, you know, good effort, just bad execution. Wow. Thank you for <laughs> being direct. <laughs> but, you know, on Ned's behalf, we do um, read him a lot for not going outside the box and being creative. Are these creative? Very. And Ned? Yeah. Mm. I think the filling's delicious. Mm -hmm. It's a boiled Cajun Pop-Tart. Mm, you know? I actually love this. Yeah, it's good. I think this is delicious. I love those flavors. Really, I just loved the filling and the spices. It's just the wrapper. It's just tough. The wrapper and is I the think one that it broke might it. be a case of too much flour, especially well, if it's an egg based. Definitely wrapper. not. So, what do you think? Is it a dumpling? It really yeah, tough, it's a dumpling. But it's, it's a right. sad excuse off. for a dumpling. Oh my god. <laughs> it's a sad excuse for a dumpling. Hey, were you guys, I'm the first person to go. Were you guys told to be super critical or something? Judges, I am very excited for you to try a fusion between Japan and Hawaii. I call these my Mapo Tofu, wait, my Mapo Luau dumplings. They are vegan tofu dumplings, and I put some kimchi, some pineapple, uh, and a little bit of Szechuan peppercorn to give it a little bit of a nice kick. And it is served with a soy vinegar and pineapple dipping sauce. You know, uh, Mapo's saying. from China, right? China. What did I say? Japan? Yeah. You know, yeah. you know kimchi's from Korea, too. And pop, pot sticker. Uh, let me take that again. <laughs> yeah. uh, so you have China. Anyway, enjoy, guys. I do like pineapple, so I am hopeful. I love pineapple, and I love bread. I love how brave those bites are. Those are very chewy. Bites. Very chewy. OK, nice. Sick. That's what I was that's going all for. all I taste is pineapple. Good. And like spice. Yeah, that's great. Rosanna, what's going on? Other judges are awfully quiet. <laughs> Okay, all right, she loves it. I got it's hit like, with pineapple. Like she them. loves it. Yeah. And then a bunch of spikes. Nice. Is there even anything else in here? Oh, he's ripping it apart. He loves it. He just wants to get to the middle of it. <laughs> What's kind of saving it is it's fried. Yeah. Because, you know, stuff fried tastes good. Yeah. So I think aesthetically, this is like a beautiful dumpling. The sauce is a uh, beautiful. It's quite tasty. Yes. Um, I can't say the same about the filling. No, no, it's cool, man. Stop there. You're great. It's awesome. <laughs> and I don't think the dough so, is cooked all the way. It's a little gummy. It's not. Well, I'm gonna put a pause in that and ignore it. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna I would put say a pause it's and ignore creative. that. Creative. Edible. Fried. Edible. You can oh, eat it. It's cooked. Rosanna, uh, this is the first food of mine that you have swallowed, I believe. Correct. I am a sucker for fried bread. You put me at a carnival, I will gain 10 pounds. Yeah, I want you to keep that sense memory and just, just associate. Is it a dumpling? Yes. Is it... Sorry. A good dumpling? I don't think so. so As we all kind of agreed, it's like a little all over the place. Yeah, you're really saved by the fact that it's fried. It's all over the place, though, on your side. I think mm, no, the second bite was not good for me. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's it? bizarre. It kind of hurts to eat. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> Judges, most importantly, is it edible? That's not, That's not, not really the criteria. <laughs> to, me, to me, it is, guys. <laughs> I have to swallow to taste it, but uh, I yes. would not want to go back for a second bite. I'm fine with that. I would guys. not want to go back. Judges, oh my god. Thank you, you so much. That's really why you're the master. Thank you. All right, Eugene, let's hit the kitchen. All right. All right, we have seen Zach and Ned, they crushed it. Now it's time for us to get crushed too. Uh, we've got uh, lots of things here. Eugene, how are you cooking today? You know, we're gonna stick with our original plans. The judging doesn't phase us. We got this. We got this. I'm gonna try deep frying dumplings for the first time. So I'm gonna do two different methods. I'm gonna steam a batch and I'm going to boil a batch. I'm cooking everything from raw. Everyone else had innards that were already cooked. Mine are not, so I really wanna make sure everything's cooked. And I just don't know if boiling or steaming is better. So let's go for it. So here we're going to start with Let's the boiling dumplings. Usually go, that yeah. takes a little more time than pan fried dumplings. We have a pot of hot water. Love that. Put a little oil just so that it doesn't stick. We're going to season this with a little salt. After the dumplings are in, we're going to wait for it to come back to a boil and bring it back down to medium heat. That way, the filling in the center cooks all the way and, um, and won't overcook the dough too much. Pretty, right? Those look huge. I said it was pretty, not if it was Almost huge. like an empanada. 
I mean, not as a type of dumpling. So another method to cook dumplings is you can also deep fry it. I do want to caution if you put too much filling, by the time your wrapper gets that golden brown color that you love, then the inside might not cook all the way. Golden brown is usually my go-to phrase for anything that is cooked well. So I have put my steam boys in. I'm going to start them in That's eight gonna minutes. Be so these dumplings have been cooking about for about eight to 10 minutes. They're all floating to the top. Uh, with the boiled dumplings, you don't want to overboil it. Once you overboil it, the kind of dumpling skin turns into a mush. So so we're gonna take this out right now, put our sauce on that we came from a mason jar. So for the boiled dumpling, what I'm looking for is a wrapper that has a nice bouncy texture and great structure so that Fire it's not um, going to fall apart. I think I went really outside the box, you know? I never have deep fried something before. Hopefully that works in the favor. But you know what? If I can get one compliment from Matt, then that's a win in my book. Aww. If I can win this episode with Matt judging, there's no greater prize. Aww. Aww. I also want to win win with that judgment. <laughs> yeah, I think we all agree. We that want would that be to so <laughs> nice. Five, four, three, two, one. Hands up, Dumpers. dumpers. Fun, please. <laughs> Fun, please. Oh Judges, my God, we all love a good breakfast sandwich, don't we? Yum, yum, wake up, eggy, sausage, cheesy goodness. Well, I am proud to present my farmhouse breakfast dumpling. I think I got a bone. <laughs> well, that's oh. not my fault. I bought a turkey from the store. I'm okay, though. Yeah, mm. I'm, I'm sorry. I can see I past that. You. I'll let Ralphs know. As we can see is the turkey over here, ground turkey over here, is cooked. Over here, this is the meat is raw right here. Aww. You know what is this is interesting because this one's cooked. Huh. This one's cooked and this one's just a little it's undercooked. Just one that got out. But the size, it's harder to cook and steam with yeah. it being so large to make sure it's cooked all the way through. So do you think it's a dumpling? I do think it's a dumpling. Just need a little bit longer to cook. Yeah, but one of them didn't make the cut. The filling was nice. Um, I did get a bone, but I can see past that. Um, I thought it was odd to make a breakfast sausage dumpling, but this it actually kind of, with the seasoning you put in there and, and this, the sauce that you made here, it kind of tied it together. Yeah, overall creativity is pretty good on this one. It kind of tastes like a really good like McDonald's breakfast sandwich, yeah. Oh, yeah. But, but that's been like left in this like steaming a little too long, so it's a little wet. Part of my inspiration mm. was the McGriddle. I wonder what that yeah, sounds like. Yeah, it tastes a little bit like McGriddle. Mm -hmm. And I love this sauce. The sauce was good. Oh my God, I just made a connection. It's like you make sauce or something. I do, and guess what? There's a little bit of my sauce in there. There's a little Are you sauce kidding? in there. Make your own delicious burger sauce. Get yourself a bottle today. Yes, Shut up, okay. Keith, are you serious? Yeah, this is a sauce yes, for burgers? Bummer, it's not a sauce competition. Yeah, bummer, yeah. yeah you know, yeah. we should really focus in Shut on the- Shut the f*** up! <laughs> <laughs> I didn't talk shit about your food, just let me, let me enjoy it! <laughs> Jesus, Zach! F***ing tofu mother Tofu <laughs> 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 oh, motherfucker. Hello, judges. As an Asian, I am a dumpling lover, but I am also an Asian from Texas. Ooh. So I wanted to flip the script and create something new. This is my Texas barbecue dumplings. Inside you will find braised brisket, collard greens, potatoes, and refried beans. And on the side is a homemade barbecue sauce. <gasps> I think this is the most cooking I've ever seen you do. <laughs> okay, how long were you saving that joke? <laughs> I'm the only one who cooks at home. Eugene doesn't cook. It's because he critiques when I make something, so he wants it to be done a certain way. It's not that I can't cook, it's just he wants to cook to all the time. The tasty cooking. way. What? I want to say the crimping is beautiful. Um, it smells nice. It's kind of like an empanada shape. You know, it's pretty Wait, big. Uh, it's that I'm big. just going to have to go to the restroom. Uh, be right back.
I'm back. Thank you for waiting. Let's Texas. go back. <laughs> Everything. Texas. It kind of looks like an empanada oh. more than a dumpling. It's quite, quite a chew. It's a little tough. Like a Texas. Te like, a, yeah. like a Texas. Tough like a Texas. It's, it's, te it's Texas tough. Built Texas tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, kind of gets stuck in your teeth a little bit. That's that's a very Texan thing. You just gotta, I gotta see what's in here because in so teeth. far. It looks like just meat. Mm, just like Texas. <laughs> just like Texas. You can't really taste all the different elements, but. Everything is kind of mixed together, you know? Like it's very meat forward. It's everything mixed together. You love everything I give you that's meat forward. Mm -hmm. I know. Whoa. <laughs> Did no one catch that? I, I thought that was perfect. I, I, I got he it. doesn't even laugh. He doesn't even crack a smile. Whoa. 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 That was pretty good. Texas hot <laughs> I'm gonna say for the record that this is the one dumpling that I keep eating. Everything definitely does come together. Mm -hmm. Like one-stop shop barbecue. Eugene did better than I thought he would do. But I don't think I would order this. <laughs> and I mean, to me, this is really an empanada, right? It's an empanada. So if we're yeah, saying it's more an of an empanada, empanada. Is a type of dumpling, which it is, then it's which a dumpling. It is, which if it's not a dumpling, is. then I wouldn't call it a dumpling because this is pretty classic empanada. Wrapped like a dumpling, it crimps like a dumpling. Yeah, barbecue empanadas, delicious. I mean, they are. They're delicious. They are technically dumplings too, but. Mm. You wouldn't call it that on the sign. No. Keith, are you trying to convince us that this is not a dumpling, so he should be disqualified? If, if that's what you think I'm trying to say, what a strategy! Mind. What a strategy! <laughs> I'm just trying to interpret it. So, really, the big question at the end is, Matt, uh, am I going to be cooking this at home now? I don't think so. This doesn't seem very healthy. <laughs> Great. All right, we'll leave you to deliberate. On that note, boys, <laughs> let's go dump. We'll go dump, and let you all dump your minds. Mm. Thank you, judges. Thank you, judges. Thank you. Thank you. All of them had like some Judges, flaws. Judges, time to deliberate. Let's start with Ned's. I thought the taste was okay. It wasn't my favorite. Yeah, I thought it was okay. I thought the creativity was really cool. I think he, him trying to fuse a dumpling and that style of cooking and food was really neat. It did take me to a crawfish boil. It had the butter, but then the the skin itself. It was just the texture of the yeah, dough, all which I think everyone struggled it. with a little but bit. I, I do but it was the texture of right? the dough all that really kind of threw me out there. there. Yeah. Zach was very interesting. Yeah, I think the filling really was a miss for me in that one. The flavors didn't really meld together. It was just really mushy. OK, I'm a little biased because I like bread. But when you <laughs> pan fry you know, a dumpling, it's mm -hmm. just so good. But that filling yeah. was a bit odd for me. I mean, when you look at it, you you do want to eat it, right? It has mm -hmm. that texture and that look. It was a sweet, sour, mushy, then salty. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so Keith was the one where you got a bone. Yeah, mm -hmm. I gotta start with the good. It, it reminded me of breakfast. Um, the sauce was but amazing, but more. I did get a bone in my dumpling, which I can't fault him for because he didn't grind it. But you also had raw meat in it. True. So I think most of them were cooked. Yeah. I think we there's just a few with a little surprises. I think they could. So does that knock him down then? Because he didn't fully execute on the technique. Yes. He did take a risk of using a raw filling. So I think Eugene did a great job. I've seen what he can do at home. I've seen how horrible he is. So I think I've he seen definitely how horrible has been burning. I think the pl the flavor profile was really good. I think frying them was really smart. Is it creative? I mean, I think. I think he's not combining flavors that we haven't had before. I'm proud of him. Oh, <laughs> I'm proud of him too. <laughs> it seemed the most married, like cohesive, like like they went together. Right. Uh, fortunate for us, he he did cook the filling. He chose the perfect. Uh, cooking technique, which was um, just frying everything. Okay, if we had to judge on just the skin, I think they would all get fourth place. Definitely. Yeah, so we gotta take that off. They can't even place. have that be a factor. It sounds they like all, we have some more they things all have to discuss. Bad, this is gonna be a really tough choice. Bad skins. Ooh. Hello, judges. We're back. By the way, have you guys been working out? Because you look incredible. Yeah. Zach, are you trying to get brownie points? Oh, that's next episode, yeah. Rosanna. Yeah. We'll see you next week! Bye!
I, I gotta say, I don't want to discourage, but today today was was a very interesting day for me to judge dumplings. I think collectively, if you guys work the dough a little longer, things probably could have been a little different in terms of uh, the dumpling skin. I, I, I'm kind of flabbergasted. I had I thought that was gonna be the easiest part of today. I, I know it seems like that was like, well, I got this. I don't know. It seems all over the place. I'm dying. Can you tell us who won? <laughs> well, people do so think the, the skin of the dumplings is the easiest. Oh. It's not. How's that a privilege, Matt? <laughs> <laughs> and that is going to someone who really missed the mark on filling and oh, on no. the who baking and on the actual bread. And that would be Zach. <sighs> so congratulations. Oh, congratulations, you have fourth place. It really tasted like spicy pineapple. You have fourth it wasn't place. cooked all the way through. Last. Kind of weird sizes. Um, it just really missed the mark for all of us. What are you talking about? Rosanna, we had the carnival connection. You fucking, I brought you to the, you came, yeah, you were throwing darts. You won a teddy bear. You did the little ring toss on the milk jars. We were on a Ferris wheel so together. And we, you loved it. And Matt, I get it. Yeah, I mean, guys, I get it. It was, it was uh, <laughs> not good. I'm learning a lot. I at least know where I went wrong this time. I'm going to get first place by the end of this. Mark my words. Judges. Respectfully disagree, but thank you for your time. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounds like the dough was really bad across respectfully all four, which kind of opens someone. things up because if it's yeah. a little more focused on fillings, I have no idea. Without yeah, debate. Yeah. Now in third place, we have... Oh. oh. Ned. God. Back to third. No. Great creativity. We like the theme. It is a dumpling. We really didn't enjoy the flavors in the dough. What do you mean? Yeah. What? I'm pissed we really off for wanted you, bro. I'm flavors pissed for you. to be in the filling and in the sauce. The dough was chewy and not good, but then I realized everyone's dough was chewy <laughs> and not good. So you're telling me that my filling was bad? Okra is a very oh. odd filling choice because it's kind of gummy, so I was, wasn't sure if it was cheese or something pulling out. Your filling was not bad. I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> but uh, thank you for saying that it was creative. I, I do uh, I do appreciate that. So now we're down to Keith and Eugene. They're both uh, very creative. Keith, this one was a little tricky for me because what I really loved the seasonings. I think it, you did the seasonings maybe the best. However, because you made them different sizes, some small, some big, I unfortunately got one that wasn't cooked. Eugene was the only one who kind of took that technical capability up a little bit and fried his dough, but inside it was all just kind of like a little mushy. But we really enjoyed it holistically, how all of the flavors and textures came together. So... Wait, without further ado, you got to second. I know, Matt, I was so close. At the least you got the second The dumpling challenge today is gonna Who be... Is it? Who is it? Eugene. Oh my God! Oh my God. Oh you did a great job. I'm cooking this for you every night. Wow, that feels great. I feel like uh, I typically would have done an Asian dumpling immediately, but I wanted to try to think outside the box, do something a little different. I'm just happy, you know, uh, I, I'm not trying to build an enterprise on dumplings, but I am trying to build an enterprise on sauces, and uh, they all said my sauce is the best, so that's something you can count on. Well, congratulations, Eugene. Thank you, judges. This is just episode one of Without a Recipe, but we got three more coming. Come back next week. We're doing brownies, we're doing pizza, and we're ending with cheesecake. And I'm gonna win one of them. Okay, Zach! Oh, that was great. Well, I'm I think I'm gonna end it here. So, here we are. Thank you for coming. Um Mia, if you're still here, thank you for coming. I'm gonna be be raiding Mari actually. So I'm gonna be doing that soon. Uh here we go, got it set. So thank you for coming. Uh thank you for bearing with me. Uh bye bye.
Oh.